This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give up what Welcome to the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 622 Tuesdays. We've been celebrating professional wrestling here, live from the Sorgatron Media Studio here in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, happy to be rolling with you guys. And we ha- got a hell of a crew tonight and a hell of a lineup of discussions. First of all, of course, we have a lot of the regular crew here. We do have, well, well first returning, Jay Cooper is with us. Comedian extraordinaire. Hey, thanks for having me back, man. Back on. Uh, you, we, we, the, you were requested to be back on yeah. not long after your, your appearance, so we had to get you back really? in the queue again. Yes. Wow. Yeah, so there's not, there's not often that they're, like, that they're like, get that guy back or, right. or girl back. Um, <laughs> Appreciate the love. Appreciate the love. So thank you so much. Uh, what, what's been up with you in your world? A uh, lot of shows. A lot of shows? A lot of shows. You've especially. been hitting the stages? I have, I have, and I've been putting um, shows together too. Good. Yeah. So, um, and um, I'm still doing the thing with Brian on the River Talk. Mm-hmm. Uh, we switched the dates now, so those who are used to seeing me on um, every first and third Saturday, now we're on every Friday night mm-hmm. at six p.m. And he announced that at River on River Talk, we were broadcasting here Friday night uh, from this, or I'm sorry, Sunday night from this studio. Yes. Uh, instead of their home base out there in Millville at Mr. Small's Theater, so really appreciate that. And you know, go check out all that stuff at RiversEdgePGH.com. We'll mention them them again here in a little bit. Also on the show is Larry. What's up? Hey, Larry. Hi. Deep from the bowels of uh, underneath Sorgatron Media Studios. Yep. <laughs> Been carving foam all day. Sorgatron. Already. <laughs> hey, and we'll, we'll talk about your big life choice that you made recently. Yes. Uh, that we watched on Sunday night uh, yes. as we get into the and discussions. I, here. Honestly, I, I feel so much better. You feel so much it. better. Your life is uh, just uh, brighter since you there, went there, from the E to the New Japan. There's been some. There's been a huge burden lifted off. Me. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a life change. It's an absolute life change. I love it. Uh, also with us. Uh, another uh, one of our regulars, and he has the puppets. He was doing a puppet show live at Super Indie uh, this past <laughs> weekend at the uh, DVD table. Thank you, Bobby F. J. Town from Johnstown, PA, so Floodtown, somebody, USA. Somebody wants to say hi and say he made a new friend this weekend. Oh, I mean, hi everybody. <laughs> I'm friends with Jeff Cobb. What's <laughs> up? I'm his best friend now. <laughs> yeah, you almost it was it Jeff Cobb. Yeah. You almost shook his hand with the turtle on still. No, 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 no. no. That was Shane Taylor. That was Shane Taylor. Also, Shane Taylor, an- I went for the reach, and I had the puppet on. I had to switch it real fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should you should have just used the puppet but- and then just made like a muffled voice, like. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, Jeff Cobb like saw me with the puppet. He's like, he comes up walking up to me. He's like, Yo, where'd you get that, man? He's like, my girlfriend wants a – she loves turtles. And we'll talk about so, a little oh – we'll Oh, my God. Little, oh my God Jeff amazing. Cobb is like the nicest dude ever. He is. He's we're, the best. We're going to see that on Lucha on Wednesday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. a turtle puppet. <laughs> oh, turtle God. puppet Matanza. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Could you imagine if Matanza did have a turtle puppet, like, to calm him down? <laughs> 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 That'd be the best ever. Oh, God, oh, no. My. It's like his version of, like, just stroking the furry wall. <laughs> Oh, it's, God. it's his. It's his. The sun's getting real low, big guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and also with us a very special guest uh, uh, added on here. Thank you, Ross. Ross W. Berman, uh, the fourth. I want to make the the four horsemen sign uh, of the Wrestle Zone <laughs> joining us here and probably wondering what the heck he got himself into. Uh, thank you so much, oh. Ross, for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. I did not know there were going to be puppets, so I'm like, I'm thrilled now. No, no, do not, do not feel, do not apologize for the puppets. I'm stoked for the puppets. I am utterly stoked to be here. Oh, Thanks for having me. There's more puppets. There's more puppets. <laughs> he has a collection, and he Perfect. brought them, and he brought them all to the wrestling show because last um, time, like, <laughs> some, a fan of the podcast apparently came up to him and said, "What? Where's Carlos?" Did he say? Yeah, yeah. Not everybody. T Rex did make the cut. 
T Rex didn't make the cut. That's right. He's very bitter about it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, we'll get we'll got a, a special conversation uh, with Ross here in a minute. But in, in the meantime, we got to do some business. Thank you, everybody. Check out the show live on Facebook Live. We do that 9 p.m. Eastern time every Tuesday. Uh, and uh, of course, you can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Hit us up at that email address. Good times. Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0. Tweet us at Mayhem Show and hit up the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group. Big thanks to our friend Basic Sickness at BasicSickness.com for that intro music for this and other shows on the Wrestling Mayhem Show network. And also please subscribe to us on Apple Music Podcasts mm. or Apple Podcasts. Oh, I'm not even doing that part right. Thanks, thanks, Alex. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to blame him every time I screw that up now. Um, Stitcher Spring iHeartRadio, Google Play Podcast, and video versions on the Wrestling Ma'am Show Facebook and YouTube page. And of course, thank you to our streaming partners, uh, the 405media.com, that are, of course, um, uh, putting us on their network out there on the West Coast every night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, midnight. I'm sorry, 9 p.m. Pacific time, midnight Eastern time, so you can fall asleep to the sweet sounds of mayhem. And thank you to our Patreon supporters. Uh, we got to uh, uh, hook up with Heel Bradley that won the first ever uh, Patreon Rumble, uh, which is how we're going to give away our, our giveaways here in the coming months because we got a few in the can here, including uh, this month. If you're a Patreon supporter, uh, uh, officially pledging for the month of July, we got, we got a blockers poster for you guys. With that, John Cena just oh, wow. approving of you right there. Uh, <laughs> and so there you go. That is the prize for the July yeah. pledgers. Of course, we gave a great uh, um, impossible physics um, sky skyscraper with the rock uh, movie poster. That uh, Thank you, Heal Bradley, uh, again, for the pictures as well. Uh, thank you to our fan of the show level. One dollar bow diggity. Woo! 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 Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town, Tina Keys, the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Betterment, Betterment at the uh, $5 Pocky Club level. Those guys get the gold content. Occupy Pro Wrestling, Christopher Bishop, Heel Bradley, the latest winner, and a Doc Remedy that we made fun of his entrance music from when he was a wrestler this week. Uh, and also at the $10 <laughs> Pizza Club level uh, is Billy Johnson and J.D. Jones. Thank you all you guys for helping keep the lights on here in the studio at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show and you guys can help out and be a part of the show and be our bosses as well thank you so Undercover much bosses. Bosses. um <laughs> there's a there's a patreon concept we can work on in the future bobby let's let's workshop that in the slack okay a terrible wig like stephanie <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> like 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 Zlover. i can't wait till that episode comes like out. Uh, yes you know because like, who, our... who, who's gonna be all like stephanie is that you like that's what i'm waiting to see arn anderson <laughs> He's You're just, fired. He's just right gonna be away. making photocopies in the in the hallway at the office, and yeah, I, yeah. Who are they gonna give away money to? And obviously, yeah. not gonna be a wrestler. It's probably gonna be someone from the makeup team or it, the sound department. You're gonna, or, you're gonna send Kurt Hawkins to college. <laughs> <laughs> It, it's supposed to be like definitely not in. You might lose at that too. Like not WWE, I guess. Like it's like somebody trying to get hired or something. There's some photo shoot at the performance center we saw like from the preview. So it's it's gonna be. Uh, is this the first celebrity one that they've done like this season that I know of? Like there's a bunch of them this season. There's course, there's a couple, but, yeah. Yeah, but but this is the first think... like celebrity year of it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So, but hmm. that'll be interesting. Um, <laughs> Let's and... count, count that time. Uh... Vince dressed up on Swerve. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. The best the yeah, best undercover you. job ever. <laughs> um, so, Ross, uh, we, we have you on, cause, and thank you, uh, Matt Carlins, for, for um, connecting us on this. Um, I understand that you've been covering, of course, uh, this past week, the wrestling, the wrestling, the wrestling world had, had their eyes on the courts this week as uh, CM Punk and Cole Cabana were having their trial. They were being uh, sued by the, uh, the WWE doctor that was mentioned uh, quite a bit in uh, mm. CM Punk's p podcast after, um, after uh, his departure from the WWE. Um, this is interesting uh, for me in two parts. One, because this is a wrestling situation, of course, involving um, you know, people that we talked about a lot on this show and have followed and, and curious about what they're doing afterwards. And, um, and also that this, they're getting sued based on a podcast. So yeah. I have a personal stake in this as well to see how this went as well. Did it say allegedly in front of everything we say now? Yeah, yes. <laughs> 
we make some bold <laughs> statements. Allegedly, that puppet <laughs> is uh, very dirty. Allegedly, um, mm-hmm. uh, Jeff Cobb is a very, very nice man that likes turtles. Uh, oh, that's, that's true. <laughs> that part's true. That's confirmed. That's stantulated. Uh, so, Ross, uh, t- tell me a little bit about, you know, what, uh, for those that don't know uh, going into <laughs> this, what was what was the general basis of, of this court case? Well, basically, like you said, CM Punk went on a podcast, Cole Cabana's Art of Wrestling, in uh, November of 2014. And he had, he was coming up on the end of what was, uh, by all accounts, a very emotional roller coaster for him. I mean, he sounded like he was in uh, just a, a rough mental state and needed to get it all off his chest. And so he decided... He, uh, according to deposition, text Cole Cabana said, hey, I want to tell my story on your podcast. He told his story, uh, a story that uh, I might want to add uh, does not mention Dr. Amon by name more than twice. Hmm. Uh, yeah, no, he mainly just talks about WWE medical staff in general. But Dr. Amon took uh, exception to the things said in the podcast, was also apparently getting harassed on Twitter over uh, things like uh, giving – CM Punk antibiotics, not cutting out lumps, uh, stuff like that. And he, he he ended up filing a lawsuit for defamation per se over uh, emotional tra- uh, emotional damages, basically. And that was where we were as of two weeks ago. And then after the trial, the jury found in favor of CM Punk and Cole Cabana saying that they didn't really do anything to harm Dr. Amon professionally uh, or even really um, emotionally. And so now the podcasting world is a little a little bit safer. It's a little <laughs> bit uh, it's a, it's gonna be a little bit easier to to talk on the airways and it's looking like it's looking like CM Punk and Colt Cabana aren't gonna have to pay the three point nine million dollars that yes. this uh, guy was asking for. Wow, his feelings were really hurt. <laughs> Wasn't it like one for every Twitter user that it was a dollar per st- per verified yeah. stream for yeah. per verified yeah. like stream or listen of the podcast, which oh. they had come yeah. up to as about three point eight nine eight nine million. Uh, that was that was the figure that they called, and from from what it sounded like, that was the figure that made the jury go, "Uh, no, I don't, I don't think so." <laughs> um, I was one of those dollars. This yeah, went on I for- was too. <laughs> so this went on for four years. I'm sorry. This trial went on for four years. No, well, sort of. The legal stuff went on for four years, and then it finally went to trial. Oh, I guess okay. it was scheduled. It was scheduled to go to trial back in 2016, and that scheduled date was like right around. I think it might have been maybe a week prior to when it actually started in May of 2018. But yeah, it it went about as scheduled. It just because of the the nature of the court system, it took a very long time for it to actually be in front of a jury, and it only it really. It was only in front of a jury. They picked uh, they picked the jury on the Thursday before Memorial Day, then took Friday through Monday off and started uh, that Tuesday. So it went Tuesday wow. to Tuesday, essentially, with a Thursday for jury selection. A five-day trial, less than two hours of deliberation for the jury. Uh, it was a, it was a, you know... It, it was a big trial. It was it, it was a lot, especially if, if you're in the podcasting world, especially if you're in the independent wrestling world, or even just the shoot interview business in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, that those were kind of the people that were in the crosshairs of this this trial. And I wonder how much that that factors in too, because like the, yeah, that shoot interview um, um, mm-hmm. side. Like I, I feel like that's something that much like a lot of things in indie wrestling, like that's always been below the radar. Because mm-hmm. I mean, how many people actually buy shoot interviews, right? Like, somebody's making money off it, obviously, but it's not three point nine million. I, I mm-hmm. by any stretch, probably, right? No, not at all. And that so. So that was kind of Cole Cabana did a podcast about the trial. If I don't know if you've listened to that podcast oh, yet, where he just yet. kind of he that goes was... day by day and just breaks down how he felt each day uh, over the course of the, the the trial. And yeah, even he brings up the fact that like. His lawyer uh, was talking to him, apparently podcasting, not as big of a thing outside of the wrestling yeah. community as it is within the wrestling community. As you know, don't get me wrong, it's podcasting's everywhere, comedy, wrestling, music, all of it. But it just, it isn't, it's not like the industry force uh, that I think, that uh, was... I think that it, it's not an industry force yet. It's not something that really uh, 
it, it is big within the wrestling community, but it didn't seem to a lot of the jury didn't seem to respond to the idea. Yeah, that 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 Cold Cabana interview with CM Punk probably had to have been the best, and, and well, to me, the last one that I've seen <laughs> of his podcast. I mean, I listen to his stuff sometimes, but. Mm-hmm. That one with Punk, though, that was like the best one that I think he's ever had. Yeah, I mean, it was so raw, you know. Like you said, yeah. he was in a very emotional thing well, coming well, off of all that stuff. Well, all he had to do was just sit back and let Punk do all the talking. Yeah. You know, <laughs> um, Coca Man is kind of a silly guy, good wrestler, could actually do more with it, but, you know, he got to do all that hokey crap, you know, got to get goofy and everything. But, you know, it's it's cool. Not much knowledge of the wrestling business except for what he knows in his time frame, mm-hmm. but not so much like, you know, like the Jim Cornettes and the, you know, the Kenny Bolins and, you know, stuff like that. Because I've heard people talk bad on him about how he has no knowledge of the business and asking stupid questions and stuff well, like and, that. And so his, his podcast has always been like just a conversation, like, you know, yeah. of yeah. the experiences on the road and, and, and experiences getting in the wrestling and everything. Yeah. So I, I think that's a, it's a different um, department of, you know, or category of even wrestling podcast, you know, the more mm-hmm. conversational yeah. side. Kind of like the yeah. pro, probably should have just called the pro wrestling gorilla show. Cause it seems like yeah. all his, you know, cause pro wrestling gorilla is like what a combination of all the buddy wrestlers and stuff. And then yeah. they, yeah. you know, they do a show in front of what, four to 800 people. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and so, I, well, cause I, cause when I see his interviews, I'm like, okay, this person has been to ring of honor. This mm-hmm. one has been on ring of honor. You know, it's it's, it's also who's accessible to. So yeah, it, it's hard to get those WWE guys <laughs> as a yeah. podcast, even when you're a Coca Cabana, right? Right. I can't believe the company to be honest. Yeah. Oh no, they'll they'll take Sam Roberts over Coca Cabana. Yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> or even Mr. Sorg here. <laughs> we'll see. In uh, time, and I'm interested to see that his uh, his uh, listen to his is kind of uh, uh, a diary because I listened to like his China trip. Uh, podcast mm-hmm. uh, where he was just as they were going to say so this just happened and or or so and so is having a fight with the Chinese production team because they don't shoot wrestling the same way here and stuff like that like that yeah. kind of insights and grabbing whoever was along for the ride um, mm-hmm. so I, I, I'm really interested to see how that format kind of panned out for for his experiences in a trial you know something of it, uh, go ahead oh sorry it, well, I was gonna say it's a, it's an interesting listen if you haven't listened mm-hmm. to the Colt Cabana podcast about the trial yet just just for the fact that he's uh he's very open he's very raw about what it feels like and it it also speaks exactly to what the defense kind of used which was kind of the the crux of their defense was the idea that uh you know wrestling podcasts in general are entertainment i mean even if you're having even if you're interviewing like a wrestler there is still it's it's not presented as straight fact-checked journalism it's presented as someone's side of the story it's the story of their life and when people talk they exaggerate when people talk they can sometimes use colorful language they might get meaner than they they would normally be it's 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 entertainment it's a it's and to for the way that the uh dr amon's kind of the plaintiff side was framing it they were framing every podcast ever as this straight fact-checked journalism because while it's raw it's still edited it's not like he you know just put out the raw file of the the podcast they probably had to start and do mic checks and he cut that stuff out and so that was kind of where the plaintiff side was able to to kind of get their their hooks into a case was being able to say that look this guy just puts out whatever he wants and luckily for everyone in the jury in in podcasting the jury said yeah that's what podcasting is about you just kind of put out whatever you want and as long as you're not trying to actively bring down someone's career, there's nothing, there's no case, there's no $7 million case there. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, I listened to it on the way back from Super Indie, and you could tell mm. Colts, like, up and down, and, like, it was like an almost an emotional roller coaster with him. Well, yeah, because bo- both, both teams are so skilled that, you know, Eamon's attorney would get up and you go, yeah. man, you know, Dr. Eamon really does have some points. And then, you know, Punk's attorney would get up and you go, man, you know, maybe Punk's attorney does have some points. And so you're just going back, you're getting, you know, worked by the lawyers as you're, you know, sitting there. Col- Colt's attorney uh, comes up and says seven down minutes. Yeah, Colt's attorney, <laughs> literally, he did opening statements. He would throw in a couple questions from time to time, but his whole defense was, it's so ridiculous to drag Colt into this that I'm just going to sit back. 
I am gonna not real. I'm gonna let Punk's team do the majority of the of the pulling, which they did beautifully, mm. uh, admirably, and uh, it it really it worked to Colts. You know, it worked in Colts' defense, but I could imagine sitting there in Colts' shoes and going, "Oh God, he's not gonna say anything. He's not gonna throw mm. anything at the case that they just presented." All right, all right, you're the captain. <laughs> what am I paying you for? <laughs> hey, he won. He won. He won his last trial ever. So all it was money well spent. Clearly, yeah, yeah. I know there there was a tweet about. Uh, I don't know about GoFundMe, but uh, he, he dropped the link to the Colt shop. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, no, he had, he had the the Scott Free T-shirt up like yeah. minutes after the uh, <laughs> minutes after the verdict. I think I, I I swear to God, I think Nick Hausman, the editor of WrestleZone, he was with me for the verdict. He went out to treat. He went outside the courtroom because you can't tweet in the courtroom. Mm-hmm. He went outside the courtroom to tweet the verdict. I swear, by the time he came back, Colt had already had up that uh, Scott Free <laughs> shirt. <laughs> it was that instant, and so that that's also been kind of the the fun of the post trial is kind of Colt's good humor at the fact that he it, lawyer fees are expensive. My, fa- my favorite part of the whole podcast was him saying about his suit. He's like, mm-hmm. do these guys have one suit too, or do they have multiple yeah. suits? Or <laughs> typical Coke Cabana. I, I felt for him. I was swapping out maybe two <laughs> jackets that I went. I was there for like four days. I think I had two jackets between the four days. Uh, that was funny. <laughs> well, speaking of that, so so you're 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 a wrestling uh, a pro wrestling uh, 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 journalist. And here you are covering a trial. Is that something you know? Obviously, there's been trials over the years with something mm-hmm. around pro wrestling. Uh, but you, did you ever expect yourself to be like in trial journalism mode and and having to deal with all those you know like not tweeting in the courtroom and things like that? Mm-hmm. Like, what, uh, like, how was that experience for 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 the speed that you do for WrestleZone? I mean, I'm in a weird I'm in a weird position because both of my parents are lawyers, and so it has this kind of it has this full circle moment where like I went off and did wrestling journalism, I still ended up in a courtroom. Uh, <laughs> I, I was you know on, I was on the right side of the 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 divider, but I was in a courtroom. Um, but it, the the thing that shocked me was how much how covering new japan events for wrestle zone is exactly what prepared me for this because what i did is i just went <laughs> blow by blow i swear to god we did yes, play explain by this play. i want to know blow, where... <laughs> blow by blow question by question that's the notes you get is just the play by play of each day of trial and so i was I, there was literally one day i didn't it was sunday through monday i didn't sleep because you had the best of the super juniors finals that wrapped up at 7 30 i had to be in court at eight and so i'm sitting there sleep deprived just doing exact same thing except uh with a pen and paper because you can't type in a courtroom and so it was it was just play by play and that that was the weirdest obviously the weirdest part of it was just how much how like wrestling a courtroom really is i mean like i said you're getting worked by amon's attorney you're getting worked by punk's attorney going yeah i believe that side i believe that side it's like it's like rashomon and wrestling combined and you know what i got a question about that i don't know if you can answer it for me but i've been curious um i read on certain um wrestling pages sources that um dr amon's lawyer or you know the whole thing was was paid by the wwe like it didn't come out of a you know Dr. Amon's pocket. Like like yep. Vince McMahon funded this lawsuit. I don't. I cannot speak to the actual funding of Amon's attorneys. I don't have the bills. I don't know who paid who. But I can attest to the fact that there was one day where they were doing video testimony for from WWE staffers. You had uh, Glenn Jacobs, also known as Kane. You had referee John Cone. Mm-hmm. You had Mark Carano. Uh, you had. Uh, Timothy Gang, who is a uh, audio technician, and then Larry Heck, who is a physical therapist, uh, I believe. And they were all, literally all of them had WWE attorneys. It wasn't a personal attorney. It wasn't outside. It was literally counsel for the WWE representing all of these people. So clearly WWE gave some help, if not to just the witnesses, who knows who else. But yes, WWE did seem to have some fingerprints on this. Yeah, because I was going to say, if, Mc, if McMahon um, funded that thing, and just knowing that you know they lost that, I mean, that's got to leave a bad taste in his mouth, you know? Yeah. There's a little bit of a bad taste. But I find it convenient that they happened to close the trial days before Punk's <laughs> second fight, his second UFC <laughs> fight. It just seems like WWE tries to do stuff like like post punk leaving the WWE. It, you know, like okay, like when he got I, like when he got married, that was the day he got um the notice saying that he was fired. 
it's almost the like WWE, were, and now two days before his big fight, his comeback fight in Chicago, mm. and then he loses to this guy who was pretty much stretching the fight out, basically, because Punk was winded after the second round. I mean, yeah. kudos to Punk for, for, you know, sticking it out, man. But, yeah, he, well, he, and he got this, his ass whooped in that fight. But, this is, yeah. Go ahead, Ross. Yeah, no, I get that. And this is one yeah. of those spots where it really is more of a coincidence because uh, – uh, Chris Harrington, actually, uh, of the WrestleNomics podcast, I can't find the exact tweet, but he brought up the fact that this this trial was scheduled many, uh, a couple years back at least, for exactly May of 2018. It may have been moved like a week just due to random court stuff and making sure that they were able, able to have the judge for enough time. But I, I it sounds like what ha- it sounds like what happened is. The trial got scheduled the week of the fight, and CM Punk probably doesn't have the pull with Dana White to be like, hey, I can't fight then. I've got a trial. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I I think it's just – I, look, we can't speak to what happened in 2014, but the, the trial scheduling does seem to be something of a coincidence. Well, when you look at it this way, I mean – well, Punk can look at it this way. He, It's kind of like one and one for the week. Yep, <laughs> he won, he won the trial, lost the fight. So, so he didn't he, he, he said, didn't really make any one money, but he didn't lose any. But of course, either. in a fight, he's zero <laughs> two. So yeah, oh no, he got paid real good. I find it funny though that they interviewed. Um, what, what the heck was the guy's name that beat him? Mike Johnson was that his name or sure, something? Sure, let's call him that. Mike Jackson. Mike Jackson. Mike Jackson. Jackson. That's it. Now they interviewed him. But they didn't even interview CM Punk in his hometown of Chicago. Oh, I think I think he ghosted. Like I, I there was there was. Yeah, a, yeah, but when when I saw the interview, like like um, what was it? The comedian, the guy that normally I'm, Rog- I'm Rogan. so yeah, Rogan. Like he interviewed, like okay, like Punk, you know, said hey, good fight or whatever, and then he kind of like pushed him away. Yeah, he interviewed yeah. Well, Mike the, Jackson. He did his thing, and then he left, and then CM Punk left the octagon too because yeah. he had to go to the hospital. Yeah, but it, I'm thinking to myself like they, he could have said a little something. But I think it was because uh, the the account that I read and I hadn't seen the fight uh, was something that. Rogan had actually motioned the punk that he wanted to talk to him, but punk, you know, was so out of it and needed to get to the hospital. That he they, did he look just, bad. He, His face was he did look so, bad. He yeah. looked worse than when he fought Mickey Gall. I think he that was might not have been all there after you know uh, uh, that. And you know what? I feel I feel for the guy, but you know what? I give a lot of credit to punk because mm-hmm. um, you got to look at it this way: a lot of the guys that came into UFC before they got into UFC, they started off in the amateurs. Yeah. You know, and, and work their way up. Punk just went straight to the pros, and you know, Bobby Lashley didn't get to where he's at. You know, and maybe and maybe you know, well, may, Bobby maybe Lashley that's got a, of maybe he, he shouldn't a, have. But. but see, he has a fighting background. Right, you know what right. I'm saying? Like, he, yeah, in, in the army and everything, and in college, yeah. and then you got well, Punk. I don't know. I don't know what he did in college. I'm not sure if he, you know, um, if I'm gonna say, I think he has. He's had like martial arts like training. Like yeah, during I seen his him wrestling, do that. that's not yeah, he did. That. Not that too bad he didn't. Too bad he didn't use it in the fight. No, no. I mean, it, it's not the same <laughs> as going in the UFC and, and having a ground game and everything. Right. But, you know, like judo or jujitsu or something. Um, you know, that's, that's where Ronda Rousey comes from. Judo. Yeah, exactly. They, they, you at least have <laughs> some it. combat sport um, training at it, that point. And you know what? It's not like Dana White didn't throw the dude a bone. No, like, no, no. And no. I'm not disrespecting Punk at all because it takes a lot of guts to go into the pros and and and, and fight, especially at his age. I'm not saying he's advanced age, but you know, we, I, I'd say he, he was probably a little too old for him to, to start. Yeah, but um, but but kudos for him. But he, I, I'm with he, you. Kudos for him to go him because I mean, right? I mean, other he's not the first one that's left something that was kind of a sure thing on top, like WWE. Brock right. Lesnar did the same because he decided he wanted to be a football player. Right, and that didn't pan out. He found something else, sure. Right, but now uh, eventually he got yeah. better. But then he got a little cocky sometimes. And yeah. you saw that fight. Uh, well, I'm not sure if you saw that fight when he took on um, Kane Velasquez for the championship, and Velasquez beat the snot out of him in the mm-hmm. first round and took the title off of him. So, you know, and Brock was bigger and stronger mm-hmm. and stuff. But yeah, see, but still I don't it. know. But they gave. I think that that Dana White threw him a bone because he gave I don't think he, he gave threw- Punk two unknown people yeah. who had probably two or maybe three professional MMA fights under their belt and 
Yeah. The first one, the guy didn't care who he was. Mickey Gall, I think that was his name, and he he beat the mess out of him. The second guy, I think he just tried to stretch it out because he wanted to be on um, TV longer. Tina's pointing out in the chat room, uh, I think he did a little bit of Brazilian jiu-jitsu as well as Gracie training as well as she thinks. So, um, versus uh, Dave. You know what? He did do Gracie. Uh, Lashley has training from uh, growing up with his sister's. <laughs> 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 Not get into that. Got to get that. Okay. Speaking of which, yeah. Please don't talk about that anymore. Uh, I don't even want to hear Sami Zayn talk about that. One of the worst feuds ever. <laughs> Ross, I do not want to I see that both, match. They both deserve so much better. Yeah, I know, right? It's so beneath him, man. He should have stayed in Impact. I'm I sorry. Still, I still want to get Tina's thoughts on the uh, on the uh, <laughs> obstacle course last night. Uh, being being a, a military the person what? herself, the obstacle course. Oh, no, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, we got to talk um, about that. You, 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 you to wrap up. Okay. I know, it was so elaborate. Uh, but you mentioned, Ross, uh, you cover uh, New Japan, of course, over there with WrestleZone. And, uh, mm-hmm. and we, were, we were talking a little bit uh, that uh, uh, Larry made the switch. Oh, he yeah. Left, I got a text on Sunday afternoon that he, he says, I just canceled WWE Network. Yep. Because you've, wow. you've been watching it instead of Raw because you just haven't been feeling Raw. Ride you, Along wasn't enough to, ride along to keep, that keep, not, keep paying that 999 <laughs> man, man. Man, and you went to the 999 yen, the hot 999 yep. yen. Have you figured out how much that is on your uh, on your card yet? <laughs> not yet. Cause, cause <laughs> That's I, weird. I haven't gotten the statement yet. Comes up I'll weird. let you know as soon but as I do. But you went to New Japan World. On a delay because we both had a very busy weekend. Sunday night, we watched yeah. Dominion. And honestly, I'm okay with watching it the next day and getting some sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because we did wrestle, we watched Wrestle Kingdom. For, it felt so weird. From, We're from, sitting here at eight in the morning watching watching the main event as people are going to work on the train outside the yeah, window. Like, oh, you're talking about yeah. the past one, the yeah, one that um, January. That, yeah. that, 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 that Kenny Omega mm-hmm. one. That Omega, oh, no, no, Omega no, that was, was yeah, the main that event. Was this weekend. Okay. Yeah, that's this weekend. Okay, we did, I'm we, did, we, watched that, we watched that on Sunday after, okay. after the fact. Yeah. That was a good one, too. I heard Jericho won Jericho. the IWGP Intercontinental title. Yes, yeah. he did. Yes, he did. And him, Kenny man. Omega is the he champion. He beat the shit out of Also, wear embarrassing makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know what? Shout out to Chris Jericho, man, for just going out to New Japan and, you know, like not having a problem with Vince doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, not, not having a problem with Vince, him doing it, and just kind of just giving New Japan uh, a bigger, I guess, mainstream outlook. Yeah, well, as it, far as so that way the Americans can see what they got. Yeah, I mean, Ring of yeah. Honor does it, but he's also mm-hmm. reinvented and, and, himself and, again. And Impact Wrestling has done it. Although Impact Wrestling is, they're doing okay. I think I think Impact Wrestling has what Pro Wrestling Noah, right? Um, and Ring of Honor has New Japan. In- Impact has that's a lot who of people. That's who they're point. merging with, right? Yeah, well, th- not a merge. It's just like kind of a partnership. Well, right? yeah, not yeah, a merge. Yeah. yeah, a partnership. That's what yeah. I meant to say. Um, yeah, yeah. So, there's definitely know. some relationships there, and, and there's even some other crossovers happening with Impact Wrestling because they, they have a different model um, that we've been talking about on the show here. But but New Japan was interesting because you had Jericho, you had Kenny Omega, which is a very you know Western looking you know face to be your champion now. Yeah, uh, taking down the what did we call him the John Cena of New Japan Wrestling on Sunday. Oh, Jesus. Uh, he's, is that a compliment? Uh, I don't know. Uh, wait. Not a hash John Cena. Uh, no. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's basically. <laughs> Cody. No, Okada, Okada is what they had hoped Reigns could have become. Yeah. But ultimately, yeah, pretty much. Ultimately, Jesus. Ultimately, pretty now much. Okada is just Okada. Like, you can't, you can't even really pigeonhole him. Yeah. He's like a living myth now. <laughs> he is. He is. I still want to pull a Rainmaker camera trick when we're filming some of these local <laughs> wrestling shows, by the way. Thank uh, God we were, Impact we're, dropped we're, the ball on Okada we're filming, we're filming. and he went back to Japan. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God they dropped the ball. Can you on imagine him. what he'd be doing over there? He, Jeez. He would probably be a fanboy or something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what he would have done. It's a different it's a different I thought. forgot what he did in Impact, to be honest. I cannot remember what he did. He wore face paint or something, wasn't it? Uh, it was, he it might was have. I don't even no, remember. Jer- no, it was, he had the Green Hornet thing, right? Did when he? he was in yeah, Okada? Yeah. What, wow. What, what did he yeah, do? Okada was like Kato or something when he was in Impact. That's why, that's why oh, New Japan Jesus. and Impact oh, don't get that's, along anymore. That's a little on that's, the that's too bad. Oh. That's terrible. That's what they did. Yeah, it's literally New Japan sent Okada over there. They made him the Green Hornet. New Japan went, look what you did. Look what you did to our Okada. We have to rebuild him now. Yeah. And then he became Rapungi 3K. <laughs> 
You know what? Yeah. Now, Rapunky 3K, I just saw them on um, Ring of Honor last week. Mm -hmm. So this is Show and Yo. Yeah. yeah. Who yeah, used to be tempura, called the Tempora Boys. The Tempora Boys. Okay. So now <laughs> they got a whole new tag team name. And yeah, yeah. I love the music that they came out with with um, Romero. Rocky man, that, Romero. That Romero, yeah. man, that dude is talented. I didn't know he could rap. I mean, I saw the video that they had for him and everything, got them coming out and stuff, mm -hmm. made Show and Yo look good. Like, Because I was like, yeah. I know I know them. Still miss not... the Japanese Riddles. Yeah. Shout out. They're still, <laughs> they, they, they did a good job last week, though. I forgot who they wrestled last week. Briscoes. But, uh... was it Br oh, Briscoes on Ring yeah, of Honor? Briscoes. Nice. Um, but all together, like that was a very like you had that you had Jericho, you had Rey Mysterio, of course, mm -hmm. um, and you had uh, we didn't watch the the, the forty five minute thing in advance, but uh, announcing their new CEO. That's a yeah. That's a, he, was he American? He, he's uh, he's like, no, he's Dutch. He's Dutch. Du he's Dutch. He's but Dutch. He, raised he in, in Japan, but he's Dutch. Harold May. Yeah, but he lives in New York he, he or lives something in New like that. Okay. Yeah, at the beginning of it, they showed they were like. A clip of him and his apartment in New York mm. or something. Oh, they're gonna expand. But yeah, they're 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 definitely going big with the, like the whole Western push. Mm. Yeah, uh, um, I mean, you're seeing that. I mean, the, them hand in hand with Ring of Honor that you know are basically pushing New Japan shows. The Access show that you and I have been watching. Well, just uh, look at who won their matches in Dominion. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, with the exception of Takahashi, I two, think two I young, think every title went to a Westerner. Two fine boys no, from it, Winnipeg, didn't it, didn't it? Junior tag titles are still on Suzuki Gun, but oh, are they? Okay. Yeah, but I mean the uh, um, Goto lost. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Naito lost. Okada. Mm -hmm. um, who'd the Bucks beat? Uh, Evil and Sonata. Yep. You know, like. They're they're pushing the U.S. market really hard right now, just by yeah. who they put the belts on. I think they're going further than the U.S. market at this point because they've put they've put uh, sort of the Dutch Harold May in their president position. I think they're they're going all the way to Europe, especially with the announcement of the two Revolution Pro shows they got right now. You're getting stuff like uh, Walter versus Yuji Nagata and. Uh, just a lot of really oh yeah no the Ow. strong style evolved UK shows are going to be intense Jeez. and I think Walters. I think that that Revolution Pro partnership is going to be it's if seen, not as valuable maybe even more valuable than the Ring of Honor partnership yeah and, and, and yeah. seeing what they did here because when they had the when we got um, the the New Japan shows last year like mm. it the was G1? Yeah, uh, not, no not G ones like it was uh, what, what what is it is it World was it World's Collide or something like they did they did a oh, World's Collide yeah um, World of the Worlds World of the Worlds was. thank you yeah and, and, but it was like the four show tour and they started here in Pittsburgh and it was like the hottest uh, uh, you know Ring of Honor show I have ever seen here I was they, mad that I missed that yeah it, it, I it, wanted to go to that it was the first sold out show at Stage A E here in town which is you know it's not the it's not the the, the arena. But it's it's a good size you know venue mm -hmm. for them. NXT didn't sell out at this last time, time and I was there for that one. Yeah, yeah, they didn't sell out. That no, one. not even close. Versus you couldn't get a ticket. I got in on a press pass uh, <laughs> thanks to some connections. Uh, but uh, you know, but what's that? Same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Uh, but <laughs> but still, like you know, that's that, that kind of shows how strong that is, and that that you know, between that and the Bullet Club thing, you know, and 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 you know, the New Japan guys, like this is really crossing over, and just one of the many many choices that's that's growing out there right now, and, and the biggest. And see, WWE is noticing that, which is why they're trying to. Because I I read somewhere that they're trying to offer contracts to Kenny Omega, and oh, um, yeah. and the Young Bucks. Now I don't want that to happen. Not they yet anyway. They, Not yet anyway they, because. They, they, because just they do like that every couple of years, though, yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah. So they take a pass every time. And, and and this is why yeah, I'm too. liking this because <laughs> earlier y'all was talking about um, wrestling revolution, and I hope that they get picked up like you know by some network or something. If it almost feels like with Impact and with Ring of Honor, it's almost like kind of like the old territory days of the '80s mm -hmm. and stuff. Because mm -hmm. you know when when WWE bought WCW back in 2001. I th or was it two? It was a 2001. 2000, 2001, yeah, yeah, yeah. 2001. When they bought them, I mean, I was very upset because it's like now we, we don't have an option now. Like we're stuck yeah. watching just WWE, and I'm so glad that, we're, that, that Sinclair Broadcasting picked up Ring of Honor. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad that, well, whatever yeah. network picks up Impact, I don't Impact know. Impact still one, exists. Yeah, they still exist. They, still come on, they, come on, they come on after a soap opera, but whatever. It's cool. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. 
and and with Don Callis um, on board and 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 um, uh, Scott Demore um, taking over, um, I will admit that Impact has gotten better. Yeah, I've been watching it a little bit more. There, and as you can see on online, like um, the ratings have gone up, and it's given us something else to watch. Because I'm telling you, I get bored when I watch Raw. And yep, I do too. And when and when mm-hmm. yeah, because I'm I swear I try to watch it and I fall asleep within the first I, two I, hours. I, I watch back. I DVR of, it. I watch back episodes of New Japan during the bad matches on Raw. Well, not the bad matches, but whenever I lose interest on Raw. <laughs> See, now you know I'll just, what, I'll now, just keep track of how much New Japan I've watched. Now, now you there. okay? Now you know what I used to miss. Okay, this now Sorg, you know what I'm talking about, and you know what I'm talking about too. Yeah, back in in '98, um, when Nitro and Raw was going back to back. And we would probably, well, and I did. I watched Nitro first because it came on first. It came on because mm-hmm. Raw back then used to come on at 9 o'clock. They were 9 to 11. It was you, only a two-hour show. Much, you didn't as much so, tape for uh, taping Raw. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I, would, I would watch the first hour of Nitro and then switch over to watch Raw from 9 to 11, then switch back over to TNT oh. so that way I can watch the rest of Nitro. The replay. Plus, yeah, yeah, I would watch too. the replay exactly. Plus, during the summer, yeah. they replayed Nitro at like one in the morning after yeah. after that really bad Mortal Kombat show. And you know what? But it was hey, it was hey, something else to watch back. though. I will. That Mortal I, Kombat show was amazing. You know what? A hey, shout out to um, Glacier, who I hear is still <laughs> who I hear is still doing wrestling. Great things in Cleveland. Who I hear is still wrestling to this day. Yep. Is. Um, yep. And I really also like Mortal Kombat show. I, yeah, he was the only Mortal Kombat character that still was going on because the other one just fell off the face of the earth. The other one died. So, yeah. Actually, I think both no, of them died. In your life. Brian yeah, Clark is dead. dead? Yeah, yeah, dead. Yeah, yeah, I think Brian, yeah, Brian Clark is very dead. dead. Yeah. 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 yeah, Brian Clark exactly. passed away? Yeah, he did. I, when did he yeah. die? Uh, a few years like, ago. Like it, yeah. I know Brian Adams died, but he wasn't a a cartoon character. He wasn't a Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Brian Clark passed away? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Yeah, he was a cartoon. Sorry character. to break it to you, dude. Huh. Crush. Now the only time he was a cartoon character his was name, when his was name when was he Rath. the only time. <laughs> well, yeah, Brian Clark, yeah, but oh man, okay, well, I'm confused. The only no, the only time that Brian Brian Adams um, Crush was a cartoon character was when he was rocking the uh, the purple and yellow and yeah. was rocking the long blonde hair from Kona White going Shaka Brother and doing that stupid <laughs> ass that doing that stupid ass cranium crunch submission and then losing to the Doink the Clown at freaking WrestleMania. I'm like, come on, are you <laughs> go, serious? Go I, I always got the vibe the Chronic were like they weren't maybe kid cartoon characters, but they definitely got that like yeah. Adult Swim or like Spawn vibe of just pretty like, sweet. Oh, I was yeah, like, I was <laughs> feeling Chronic. Until they came to Pittsburgh, and that was the last time they was in the <laughs> WWE. I remember that pay per view. We, we, you was probably there for that, right? What was it? Um, WWE Uncensored or something like that. What? I mean, not, not Uncensored. It was Unforgiven. Um, Unforgiven. That was their That's what it was. And they took on Kane and Undertaker, which was, um, a, as Jim Cornette would call it, a four finger stinker. <laughs> you ever hear that? <laughs> Because you got to put four <laughs> fingers in your mouth and throw up just to get the taste out your mouth. Because that's how bad right, the match is. Right, I want to roll this back. Because Ryan, Brian Clark is, uh, according to Wikipedia, still alive at least. So Okay, uh, Brian Clark is still alive. Think, I think we're thinking Brian Adams, that is. That yeah, is he's dead. Not yes. Adam Bomb, Crush. Right. Oh, okay. Is dead. Okay. I thought Adam Bomb died. I, I, I thought he did too, but not in That's what happens when you fall off the hey, face of the earth. Hey, you just, I, yeah, we should, all, we should all be very relieved that Brian Clark is still allegedly. alive. Allegedly. <laughs> we forgot to add allegedly. <laughs> I, wonder if they, I wonder if he, um, you know, has he signed any Adam Bomb Nerf balls lately? Like, I'm sure he has. I'm sure he has. I have one of those. I caught one. <laughs> I did. All right. You know what's going to make you feel better? Uh, 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 Shout out to Harvey Whippleman for making him famous. You know what's going to make you feel better <laughs> two about, about this? What's going to make the hurt go away from 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 the cartoon characters dying? <laughs> God, I got to work on. I wish I, I wish I had those Han funeral home ads on, on, on River's Edge. We'd have so much fun with that, right? Uh, but anyways, well, we got our good friends at Support in Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Our friends at Slice on Broadway, right up the street. We're on Broadway. They're on Broadway. They're the originals. They're all around. Right. They're all around. Uh, the city here expanding as the show has uh, right here as well as PNC Park home of the Pittsburgh Pirates East End uh, and Carnegie PA on Main Street what we're, we're trying to figure out I, we, we started this this kind of uh, our own kind of ghost campaign for them that if because uh, we know we have a lot of people on the West Coast a lot of people all over 
Um, I know Ross, you're up around the Chicago area, right? So you got yep. you got you got you got your deep dish thing going on there. But maybe you want some I'm, good. I'm from, I'm from New York. I'm I'm a New Yorker in Chicago. Oh, I've always well, been we, a, I'm I, a slice guy. Well, I'll tell you what. The slice on Broadway is New Yorker approved from our friend Mad Mike from up in New York. Um, and uh, if you happen to have a Broadway in your town and you find an empty storefront, I want you to take a picture on Twitter, tweet at PGH underscore slice and say, hey, this would be a good place for a slice on Broadway and see if we can get these guys to expand even further. Help them out. Help them consider. Maybe we can get a slice on Broadway out there in Long Beach, California for Alex Cars or wherever else. I know we have people building rings in Austin, Texas. Uh, saying, man, I wish I could get some slice on Broadway. Thank you so much. These guys have been supporting us for a long, long time. Don't kick the door down, but let them know that the Wrestling Mayhem uh, sent you. If you do, go and check them out. Uh, And uh, thank you to them for supporting the show. Well, there you go. <laughs> Sorry, I thought Bobby was saying something. Um, I was going to say allegedly. Allegedly, <laughs> the best pizza in the world. Uh, <laughs> if we talk about the best pizza in the world, we're gonna we're gonna stop talking about wrestling, and it's just gonna be a long debate. The best was we, we did get an, an actual Italian in here talking about slice on Broadway in Italian with oh, Ma- yeah. Mambo Italiano. Yes. Did, did he have the, that thick Italian accent? Oh, dude, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. We oh, thought yeah. it was a gimmick, and I was like, thought, what? No, he he's came, real Italian. Yeah, he came out, and he, he had, like, the broken English and everything, and he's, like, dancing and, and being, like, a ridiculously, like, oh, it, Italy's better than you, you know? And then I actually I like, talked to him, like, like, you know, afterwards, and I'm like, is this guy still, like – is he still playing with me? He's still playing with me. Italy then, is better than us. Oh, it's real. I've been I've been to Italy. You should see how this guy dances. I, I've been to Italy. No, no, they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. You should see how this guy dances. He's here in a green car trying to make his go at wrestling. It's amazing. Amazing story. He was on uh, Raw. And, and he was on Raw recently. Well, he was he was one of the the the. The, the rosebuds, the ro- yeah, the new rosebuds with ho- no, the conga line, which is appropriate because well, I with mean, no way, Jose, yeah, yeah. With no way, the Jose, no yeah, the no yeah, buds, the no, the no buds, the no he, buds. He had an encounter with Honky Tonk Man a few months ago. Oh, okay, uh, yes, he, he was showing off his talents, and Honky took some uh, shake rattle. And did he it. did he take a guitar to his <laughs> head? Took a gu- guitar to his head. Yes, and and then and um, no, actually no, he didn't take a guitar. He, he took the worst shake rattle and ro- roll I've ever seen. Oh wow! Um, and then Honky Tonk Man sang along <laughs> to his music the entire track. <laughs> which which one, the WWE version or the WCW version? Uh, the WWE version. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The 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 Honky Tonk Man music. I didn't even know it was WCW stuff. It, you know what? Thankfully, it wasn't that bad. It well, wasn't that bad. It wasn't bad, but it was just not the original. Like you can't I go. Mean, he, I, I'm not going to take like the WCW Hulk Hogan theme over real American. Like, that's just not, that's like sacrilege to me. Well, let me ask you this. Like, when he teamed up with Greg Valentine and they were the Rhythm and Blues, what Mm -hmm. did you think about that song, Hunka Hunka Honky Love? I mean, I loved it because I was like nine. Yeah. But, (laughs) you know. (laughs) And I thought them driving out in that old caddy was like the greatest thing at uh, WrestleMania. Yeah, that was cool, except for Greg Valentine with the black hair, man. That really fucked me up. I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Well, anyways, because even Greg Valentine said he hated it's it. It's like his evil twin brother. When I, I mean, yeah, I can't when, imagine. When they, when they, I, Greg, when, I, every time I've ever seen Greg Valentine, he never looks like he's having a good time. Yes. And, and even then, yeah. When, when I saw the Honky Talk Man shoot interview, um, he talked about that, how Greg Valentine hated the black hair. He said, like, man, I hate this hair, man. I ain't never going to get no pussy with my hair looking like this. <laughs> <laughs> and Honky was like, dude, you're married. Like, <laughs> I thought Craig that was hilarious. Well, that's not the weirdest thing Honky <laughs> said. <laughs> Evil universe uh, name. <laughs> Anyways, we do have Money in the Bank coming up this weekend. Um, one I'm looking forward to, and man, it's got to be better than Backlash. Uh, so <laughs> Backlash yeah, happened already? Oh, Backlash happened, and we all tried to forget it. Oh, um, Jesus. So uh, uh, hopefully, finally, we get the match that we've been waiting for with uh, uh, AJ Daniel Styles. Daniel Bryan versus Big Cass. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yo, I'm sorry. His theme music <laughs> still sucks. He's, they done he changed it. Roman two, Reigns versus Jinder Mahal. Yeah, yeah, they done gave Big the Cass two theme songs, and they both suck. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, okay, I'm not, so I'm not feeling them. So those it matches the character. Maybe we'll <laughs> yeah. Maybe we'll, we'll we'll skip those ones. But generally, I think oh, allegedly, 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 <laughs> I'm going to enjoy the rest of the show. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, all yeah. right. What, what's what's, the, what's the match? Because you got me out walking on eggshells here. What is it like? What, <laughs> if, if if 
uh, Money in the Bank turns out to be a stinker, which mm-hmm. it probably will, um, Kazuna Road will be airing uh, New Japan World Friday night at 3 a.m. <laughs> and you can watch re- <laughs> oh, replays so, on and So technically N- Saturday N-W-P. morning. What's that? Is it Friday morning or is it Saturday it's, morning? It's, it's Saturday morning. Saturday? Okay. Okay. But nobody's going to know what happens if you watch it on, like, if you wait a day, so if we need it, a palate cleanser, on the internet. if we yeah, if we need a palate cleanser after Money in the Bank, we're just gonna just or watch during it in Japan or during <laughs> or during or during. I'll, well, be, I'll probably have my headphones in and we'll be yeah. watching it on my phone. Yeah, we'll just throw it up. But yeah. Um, yeah, but we will have speaking of New Japan, AJ Styles Nakamura. Yeah, the Last Man Standing. Yeah. Okay, that'll, I'm, that'll be worth it. I think Not this is for everybody. It feels like it should be the end of the feud, so this is the one we're waiting for, right? I'll pause New Japan yes. for that. Yes, you'll oh. pause New Japan for that. Right? Yeah. yeah. I am. Um, okay, because this, this Nakamura started the what I call the low blow era. <laughs> That's what I've been talking about on, uh, on and Facebook and yeah. Instagram and stuff because he started it. And ever since he did it, everybody else has been doing it. Mm-hmm. Impact mm-hmm. Wrestling people have been kicking each other in the oh, balls and low blowing people. They've yeah. been doing it on Ring of Honor. And I'm just like, see, Nakamura started that shit, man. <laughs> And, and he's the trendsetter. It, it was cool when he did it at WrestleMania, but then he kept doing it every single week. And I'm thinking to myself, man, like AJ's balls has got to be like, <laughs> like raisins. Now. He's already got but four no. kids. He's right, so he's he's <laughs> good. He's, they're gonna do it to anybody. <laughs> Three boys and a girl. He's good. Um, I don't need these anymore. <laughs> this is the match. Are we are we doing predictions for this? Yeah. What are you thinking? Okay. Obviously, Nakamura's gonna win this one. You think? You, you I think? Hope. You ha- he, he has better. to. Yeah. He I, has to I win. I agree. He has to win. He has to. The last one was thrown out. Also, I mean, to me, other factors, we don't have a universal title match, although we didn't at Backlash either. We haven't had so, a universal title match in a long time. Yeah. Like, and, they, and in fact, oh, congratulations to Brock because he surpassed <laughs> CM Punk's record no, no, no. for champion. Uh, Congra- yeah. no, congratulations Except to, to Paul Heyman for breaking yeah. the record twice. Because <laughs> yeah. oh. Heyman managed both of them. Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah. Has anybody checked Wikipedia to see if Brock Lesnar's still alive? Because <laughs> I haven't seen him in two months. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Allegedly. It takes a Allegedly. long time to plow Brock that. comes out on Monday in sunglasses being propped up by Heyman. They're doing Weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> <laughs> weekend at Brock's. Hey, it Heyman's takes a long nothing. time to plow that field in that giant-ass farm that he lives on in Canada <laughs> while Sable just lays out um, on a, I don't Rina? know, a sun chair sipping on lemonade and... You know, trying to relive her glory days. I don't know. <laughs> she probably laying out in the sun with with that with with hand face paint like on her on her tits again. Wait, you think she just, just like, walks what? around that way around the house? Just at the farm. Just at I the mean, farm. It's, it's just how they roll. Yeah, it's a remote location. Uh, they, they, nobody around them. She can do whatever she wants. We need far more women's representation on this show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Nakamura has Nakamura. to win this because that'll keep it going and stuff, and it'll mm-hmm. you know, and and then he'll lose the belt at SummerSlam. So, you know, uh, that's my prediction. I don't know. Okay, okay. Anybody else want to chime in on this? Uh, yes. I, I don't think it's going to be. I don't think it's Nakamura. I think AJ keeps it. Keeps rolling with it. Well, okay. Well, he, here's the here's a twist. I, because it is Money in the Bank. Mm-hmm. Whoever wins, which okay, wait, let me stop. Cause, oh, cause we're, so we're, wait, wait, we're doing the secondary uh, bet of <laughs> does somebody cash it in same night? Ooh. Yes, and I already have a good idea who it's going to be. Okay, okay, what are you thinking? I got to go with Samoa Joe. Do you think so much Samoa Joe's going to get it? Yeah, and then he's going to beat up. He was he was going at AJ Styles about stuff. Yeah, I mean, because seriously, like on Raw, I mean, come on, we we know that. Mm-hmm. Braun Strowman ain't going to win that shit. Okay, he's probably going to beat Brock at SummerSlam mm-hmm. to take the belt off of him, but he's not going to win hope. Money in the Bank to do it. It's going to be something else further down the road. So Samoa Braun, Joe. If anybody needs that the least, it's Braun Strowman. Right, he don't need yeah. it. Yeah. He doesn't need it. And, just, neither, and neither does Bobby Roode. Chopped. Bobby Roode doesn't need it. Vince McMahon, you probably get it. Yeah, Bobby. You know who I think is going to win the Money in the Bank match? Go Mid. for it. The Miz. The Miz. You know um, what? I'm on board with that. I'm a miss. Yeah, it's going to be a whole storyline on Miz and Mrs. It's going to be. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be basically him saying that I've done. It, it's going to be him reliving that 2010 Money in the Bank run, but in a much more uh, sort of a look how much I've glowed up kind of way. They got to promote Rough Rough Ref if you saw SmackDown. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. I'm on board with that. 
WWE is the biggest company in the world, and the fact that they don't have a dog that is also a referee is laughable. <laughs> it's 2018. Uh, watch SmackDown. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right. That, uh, you, you SmackDown pe- is, the it, is the it show. There's nothing in the rules that says a dog can't be a referee. <laughs> SmackDown, SmackDown that a dog is can't what? Show, be a referee. Oh, God. Jeez. <laughs> Oh man, I'm gonna miss them when they go to Friday nights. Uh, but other than that, I, you know, I gotta run down because uh, Larry, you know, since he's done his um, uh, New Japan Exodus, uh, doesn't entirely know who all's in Money That's in the, the Bank. Pay per view for New Japan. What, what's that? What's that? New Japan, New Japan Exodus is the next pay per view for. It New sounds New like Japan. one, doesn't it? <laughs> Sakura Exodus. Um, it's a pro. It's a Noah event. event. It's a Noah event. <laughs> Noah event. Yeah. It's navigation to Exodus. <laughs> Navigation <laughs> to Exodus, but in the in the Money in the Bank, just as a reminder, Brought to you by Tom Tom is, <laughs> is Samoa Joe, Kevin Owens, Bobby Roode, um, Braun Strowman, The Miz, Rusev, Finn Balor, and you ready for this? I forgot Rusev was in one it. of the members of the New Day. We don't know which. Yeah, who? we still don't who? know. We don't who? know who who. who? 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 It doesn't matter. Neither I'm one thinking, of them are going to win. I'm thinking not Xavier Woods because he's busy. Um, uh, he's busy at E3. <laughs> he's, he's got a big match. With his up, up, down, down. Actually, all of them are busy at E3 now. Uh, you yeah. hear about this? Like the New Day is taking on the Elite. And WWE uh, in, acknowledged it. And Street Fighter at E3. Oh really? Yeah. Well, last last year, like uh, Kenny Omega and Xavier Woods like had a face to face at E3. Okay. And it's it's led to this this year. Uh, this is actually, I think, two or three <laughs> years in the making. Um, and then um, oh, I forget which game. I, I tweeted it, uh, or I, I put in the uh, – Xavier Woods is actually going to be a character in a video game. Oh, um, God. Was announced. Bomberman. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Bomberman uh, R, I think, for uh, for PS4. So is his hair going to be out? Is it going to be in a ponytail? Uh, it's mostly out. I, I think it's mostly okay. out in that one. So. Yeah, because I don't like his Confession? little – Confession? Because I don't like that poofy ponytail that he's rocking. I'm not liking that. <laughs> Braid that I shit, a, man. I have, I have a confession to make. <laughs> What's that? Today I watched. This is non wrestling related. Today I watched. When I come home from work, I watched uh, reactions to Smash Brothers reactions <laughs> to the characters and stuff. It's some of the funniest stuff. Like grown men just like, oh my god, like freaking out over like just different characters that, that are coming back for Smash. That this Sonic the, the Hedgehog is in. The is best, in. yeah. Kirby, yeah, like Kirby. a grown man, like almost crying because Kirby's back. <laughs> Says all of us that react so heavily on professional wrestling. Just want to just want to put that in perspective for you. Um, like the clouds coming. I back. love this stuff, but I also take a step back every once in a while and realize how crazy it is. Uh, but I love it. Uh, Money in the Bank. Who you guys think? Obviously, you think the Miz, or, or yeah, you thought yeah, the Miz. I, was, I, Miz. I got Rusev. Miz, Samoa Joe. You got Rusev. Um, what, what what are you thinking, Larry? Oh shit. Um... Nakamura. No. <laughs> I'm liking the Samoa <laughs> Joe. I'm liking the Samoa Joe <laughs> yeah, myself. I, I, you know what? I'm, I'm with you on I'm, that. I'm 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 just gonna be hopeful and say Bobby Roode, and he's gonna have a heel turn. That'd be nice. He really needs to bring some class. Oh to shit! Monday he's Night on Raw. Raw. Never mind. It's yeah, yeah, that ain't gonna happen. Exactly. He's on Raw. I forgot he he's on Raw. Yeah, unless okay, yeah, unless it's, it's like Samoa Joe. Unless then. it's like that time Cody Rhodes won the Money in the Bank. Yeah, no, he's not gonna have a heel turn against Lesnar. <laughs> see, you, see, you guys gotta so you guys gotta look at it this way. Brock is not gonna lose the the um, Universal Title until SummerSlam. So it's best to just pick a SmackDown wrestler. <laughs> mm-hmm, Who's mm-hmm. it gonna be? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So I so I said Joe. Someone else said Miz, Miz which yeah. I'm on board with. Someone else said Rusev. Mm-hmm. I'm down with that too. I don't Although, see that happening. I'm not against. But, I'm not against the idea that Rusev and Lana both get the money in the bank. Oh wait, let me check. Is, is, is it? Is it? Is it? Oh, it is Rusev Day. Happy Rusev Day, everybody. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, no, yeah, I'm I'm liking that. Um, <laughs> uh, just for like the fun that will be had with it. I'd like to see Lana win that that women's money in the bank. That would be a <laughs> that, that would no be other a, oh god. I love Lana's that would be a joke. Music. I will go on record. I oh, think it's the most, it doesn't sound like anything else that they're putting out from that weird little studio that CFOs have. It's a great it's a great song, underrated. Look, it was already a joke. 
It was already a joke last year when Carmella won, and then she right. had to get the assist they with um with um the chinless wonder. I love that when she lost when she lost. I the, thought with, that was the greatest thing that they did all year. I mean, <laughs> you are in the long the run. The internet. <laughs> in the long that run, it was cool because with her building herself up with the briefcase, not knowing when she's gonna catch it in, then it's like okay, now I'm feeling it. But in the beginning, yeah, yeah. I'm like, what the hell is this? That was the you know best heat WWE's had in years. It was. It was legit. <laughs> like, like the real. only legit heat. Yeah. Because what bad guy is actually hated except Roman Reigns? Bobby. <laughs> what? Oh, well, you were saying something. What? What were we saying? Oh, I, I thought I thought you were gonna say what bad guys hated more than Roman Reigns. I say Randy Orton. But that's just, <laughs> allegedly my opinion. I think is he the mem- is he the member of New Day that's gonna be in the match? <laughs> is Randy Orton even in this pay per view? I think he's Where injured. The hell I think he's is- injured. injured. Again. Yeah, yeah, he's injured allegedly. I took out the trash again. Now. Damn, he's playing with the remote control cars. He's old, with man. Kids. <laughs> Somebody, quit tell, somebody tell him to stop playing with himself, man. Money like, in the bank. Women's get, money in the bank. Again, a little hurt. more fleshed out, I think, because it is a dual roster this year. Um, Which they shouldn't have done. Uh, I mean. Pissed about that. Becky had a good night last uh, last week on uh, SmackDown. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I could see even. Uh, yeah, did she tap out Charlotte? She tapped out Charlotte. I, yeah, in a clean yeah. match. Clean, clean match. match. Wow, it's about time they let you know Becky shine, man. Because she's been if you if you think about her win loss record last year and the year before that, she has been shit on. Like I don't she, think <laughs> I don't think Charlotte or Alexa or Sasha should be anywhere I think near Sasha might. anywhere near that briefcase. Oh, so we're, okay, are we predicting I, for the women that, now? That's my anti pick for the women. Who's it, who's in the uh, women's match? Uh, yeah, na- yeah. Oh, name- I'm sorry for Larry, uh, Lana, Natalia. Oh, went went the screensaver. Uh, Alexa Bliss, uh, Charlotte. Ember Moon, who does not look like she likes ladders from the looks the other night. Uh, <laughs> Becky Lynch, uh, Naomi, and Sasha Banks. Uh, uh, I, know what's I, I gotta go with Ember Moon on this one. Ember Moon, really? Think, you think that she'll yeah. go that quick? I think I think that the I, a I think the ladder thing is just kind of a misdirection, and b mm. they there's something about the way they've debuted her. I think they've got some kind of plan for Ember Moon, okay. and. It, it just, I don't know. My other choice would have been Sasha, but I feel like there's so much to figure out with Sasha and Bailey that I kind of want to remove the money in the bank briefcase from that whole kerfuffle. And like, I think Ember Moon would be a very interesting choice for that. Yeah. And again, um, Charlotte doesn't need it. I'm she doesn't know. need I get, it. I get, I get Becky not, doesn't idea, need it. What's going to happen? Uh, Becky, Becky could. Oh, no. She could use it. She, she could. could use it. But it's, it's always, of course, more interesting when. I unless, hmm. unless Becky does a heel turn, that could be fun. Natalia's gonna win it. Natalia, really? I, I'm gonna I'm, cash in on Ronda you know Rousey what? that night. I'm gonna go with. I'm <laughs> cash gonna go on Ronda Rousey. Oh wait, yeah, that's not a bad call. Wow. Mm-hmm. Oh please, she is not gonna beat um, Nia Jax. No. No. I think Ronda Rousey's no. going to be hijacked. No. Steph, I think she's going to have she, a goon in her I think ear. she did on Monday. She's they rang bad. the bell, didn't they? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, I don't know why the hell they did that. It wasn't even a match. It was this a face-off. And then all Win. of a sudden the bell rang. I'm like, what the hell was that? That was bad. That was really bad. I don't know what that was about. That was so dumb. Vince Young into the poor guy's headset. Ring yeah, the bell. Ring the bell. I think bell. That, Natty's going to. But um, if anything, I think Ronda Rousey is going to lose. By getting screwed somehow, shenanigans. You're, you're yeah. saying shenanigans. Yeah, that could happen. Yeah, it could, and, and this, this could roll to SummerSlam. You think? But as far as winning the the women's money in the bank, Naomi. Naomi, yeah. really? Ooh. Yeah, I could see that. She shined. I like that. She shined at WrestleMania. Yeah, that's true. Won that battle royal. That's true. And she's been on a roll lately on SmackDown. Mm-hmm. Why not? You know, just slide in, cash in the briefcase. Throw her ass in someone's face, pin them one, two, three, boom, done. Anybody else? From just, oh, go ahead. From your lips to Road Dog's ears. <laughs> <laughs> Road Dog's dartboard. Yes. <laughs> up there. Yep, yep. Allegedly. 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 <laughs> we know you listen, Road Dog. Allegedly. Yeah. Um, oh, you didn't know. Any other thoughts from this card? There's a lot more. There's tag matches. Just, uh, on, just throw them out. Just throw them out. Cass and Daniel Bryan. No, no, no. Just throw them uh, out. The 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 sons of IRS are facing each other in tag team action. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, so that's going to be interesting. <laughs> These battle scars. I'm sorry. I love that theme song. <laughs> is, is IRS the the special guest referee? Wouldn't that be amazing? You um, know? I you know what? I'm on board with the B team winning because I never liked Matt and. 
and um, Bray. And, Bray and Bray as a tag team in the first oh, place. I, I did not I like it. it. This deleter of worlds. I just don't think they know it's what to do with so it. stupid. It's so but stupid. That's but why it, I yeah, love it's it. It's funny. Okay, but, okay, but, it, but it's run its course. Now, it's like the best Bray's it, been forever. No, give it I to... I hate to say it, though, but what Bobby said about they don't have, know what to do with them is kind of why it's... That's like this... That's the whole thesis behind the Raw Tag Team titles, basically. It's, it's, we don't know what to do with James and Cesaro. Here's the titles. We don't know what to do with Bray and Matt. Yep. Here's the titles. Right. The author's exactly. a painter on the, the uh, bookshelf of pain. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that they haven't been on in like a month. What happened to that? Because they're waiting for them to swoop in and just dominate and take the belts or something. Where's our tag and team what about the, the revival, the man? Revival. They're shitting on the revival. Has, I am yeah. I am so mad about that. Has Sanity debuted yet? No, they're uh, holding them back. <laughs> They're holding them off for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, they, had they the were because they were doing vignettes about them and everything. They had the promos, and, and, and then they were like, "Oops, sorry." Um, oh my god! So there was that. So I don't know what the hell they're doing. Well, Money in the Bank this weekend. We're having a watch party here, of course. A lot going on with that. It's going to be four hours, I believe. Yeah, it's starting at seven p.m. Hours. It's going to be. <laughs> it's going to be one of those sure. things. We're going to talk about TakeOver in a little bit after the big question. Uh, if you guys want to advertise with the show, you can hit up the responsible one, uh, Producer Missy, over at uh, info at sorgatronmedia.com. If you're looking for some great advertising options that won't break your brank, 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 break your brank. Damn. Break your bank? Wow, I need Money to have some more bank. coffee. Advertise with us so you can get such expert delivery such as this. Uh, for more details for advertising, hit up uh, info at sorgatronmedia.com. We'll be back with the big question, more wrestling chat, takeover, and who knows where we go from there. Maybe more puppets. You don't know. We'll be back after this. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Man, I'm getting you in trouble. Mad Mike, Mad Money. I want to keep you to keep your in, your all your energy to unleash for Lucha Underground tomorrow. I can't watch Lucha Underground because my stupid Comcast cable provider won't um, give it to me. Ah, so sign up for a trial. That's what I'm doing. Get some Sling TV. Get that Sling TV I trial, already, Bobby. I, I, I gotta watch season it, two get just that, to remember what the hell I, happened. It's on Netflix. Get that YouTube but, TV I, trial. I decided just to start. A clean slate and just start from this season. Start from season yeah. instead, instead of yeah. no, instead of trying to watch forty-two episodes of like every season that I've missed. I'm just starting with season four. There you go. Okay. There you go. That's what we're talking about. Lucha Underground. It's coming up. It's clean slate. It's coming up Wednesday. We're excited. The new uh, Lucha Underground podcast will debut. I'm waiting for a confirmation on our guest. We just got a confirmation. Did we just get a confirmation for our guest tomorrow? Let me know if I can say anything on the show there, Mike. Um, you guys know who we're booking. We book him every time something interesting happens on Lucha Underground. Carlos. Yes, Carlos. Um, maybe Drago. <laughs> Drago was on telling us about the bathrooms last time they were on. Drago so. was impressed by Carlos. I mean, or maybe Matanza. The... Maybe Matanza will be first... on talking about turtles. You don't know at this point. We're going to so. have a Lucha Underground podcast with puppets. <laughs> and we're just going to have Jeff Cobb and, and uh, Drago on. You know what? Spirit Speaking of like some the, puppets, they're spirit puppet. Does, <laughs> well, it's not really a puppet; it's a stuffed animal. What, what's, what's that character? What's, the, what's that guy from um, New Japan Pro Wrestling? Was a oh Daryl? Oh Daryl! Yes, the cat. Yes. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what's the, what's the guy's name? Takahashi? Yeah. yeah, Tanahashi or Taka, something like Takahashi. that. Takahashi. Yeah. Okay. What, what's the origin behind the fat cat? I don't know. Because I looked it up on Google. They're actually selling it. Yes. They're selling the cat. Are we talking about Daryl? Are we talking yes, about Daryl? Yeah, 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 we're, we're talking, about, talking about, Daryl. about Daryl. We yeah. have the expert here to tell us. Here's here's what happened with Daryl. All right. So uh, Hiromu Takahashi was madly in love with the junior heavyweight championship belt. I mean, he would bathe with this thing. He would lick it. He was truly in a rela- He called it Mr. Belt. He was in a relationship with this belt. <laughs> okay. When he lost the belt, he was so broken that he needed an emotional support animal. No. That emo- I swear to God, the emotional support animal he got was Daryl. A- it's a popular cat toy that you can just buy in Japan. He doesn't own the IP for the cat. It's just it's it's its own thing. Okay. He did give it a wig, however. But yeah, it's it's just a stuffed cat, and he, he held it. He loved it like it was own. Then bad luck, Fale destroyed it. Yeah, I remember that. Ripped it up at last year's G1, and so Third he times. would he would wander around, and he would be like petting Daryl, but it would just be the air, like he's petting the ghost of Daryl. It was heartbreaking. Okay. Uh, yes. And then, then Daryl resurrected. He now has a family, and Daryl Jr., who's a Lucha Libre wrestler. It's it, 
Daryl's doing very well now. Okay, when, when was this, and do they have it on the back? Category? This is all within like the last year. They Daryl went away because okay. Hiromu's got Mr. Belt back. Again. I gotta find. Okay, because I saw this match on Ring of Honor, and I, I think um, Tana, Takahashi Tanahashi. Okay, he teamed up with like two other Japanese um, New Japan mm-hmm. wrestlers. And they took on um, the Young Bucks and someone mm-hmm. else from the Bullet Club. And I remember that they grabbed the cat. The Young Bucks grabbed the cat mm-hmm. and held it in a tombstone position <laughs> yep. Yep. while yeah. the guy, while, while driver. yeah, did, did that jump off the top rope and did that flipping yep. tombstone thing. And I'm just like, did they just do that to a stuffed cat? Like, yep. Uh, like, yep. Mm-hmm. And then it's and, not and, the weirdest then, thing I've seen then, in pro and wrestling. Then, and then when I saw Tom, he was very heartbroken, like he dropped to his knees and grabbed it. And and you're hearing the crowd going, oh, and then and the other crowd was chanting, you effed up. You effed up. I'm just like, so what after, am I watching <laughs> after hearing? I mean, I was entertained. That. Don't get me wrong. I was very entertained. But mm-hmm. what after, was that? Right? After hearing all of that, why have you all not deleted your WWE app? <laughs> <laughs> Table for three. I don't man. understand. Table for three. You know I what? That is understand. more entertaining. It I is. swear, Ring yeah. of Honor is more entertaining in that one hour mm-hmm. than 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 Raw in three hours. Or in mm-hmm. sometimes SmackDown for the two. Yeah. The only yeah. thing that is keeping me wanting to watch WWE is NXT. Well, I think that leads yeah. into our big question of this week. Yes. We're talking about a lot of different promotions. We're talking about Money in the Bank. So this was a mashup uh, uh, that, that we came up with. Actually, producer Missy came up with this one. Shout out to Missy. Shout out to producer Missy. Um who's finding legal documents for us as well off air. So, uh, and I can't. What's that? You didn't think I'd be doing that. No, well, no. Of course, you're looking for legal documents. I remember when you found that one person, that one person's uh, house address the one time. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the big question is: there it is. If you had the ability to give the Money in the Bank briefcase to anyone in wrestling, who anyone would it be? in wrestling, anyone anybody wrestling. in wrestling. So, so not even WWE. Not affiliated. even WWE. But you gave them a Money in the Bank briefcase. To show up on some WWE program and 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 buy for the belt, who would you give it to? It would have to be a Bullet Club member. Cody. Cody. Yeah. Yeah. See. Again, he's had it. Yeah, mm-hmm. but coming but, coming but off American of Nightmare Cody. the run that he's had this past yeah. year, that would be the biggest fuck you to the WWE is have him come in and screw over Brock Lesnar. Can't yes, it would. WWE. It just WWE seems ring. like the it just seems like the the money in the bank is better for heels than it is for good guys. It oh is. yeah. Oh yeah. It's yeah. just so much better. Um, I yeah, a, 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 a Bullet Club member. Yeah, Cody is a good example. Nah. Um, or, or, maybe, nah. maybe, um, Squirrel, Marty Squirrel. Okay, I thought you just said Squirrel. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I have a hard time squirrel. pronouncing his name. Look, I have a hard time. Squirrel Girl, what podcast is this again? <laughs> <laughs> Marty Squirrel. Uh, he, Ro- would, Ross, he would be good. Ross yeah. is making Ross is making noises I, over I, there in response. I gotta, I, no, I gotta, I gotta, ju- I gotta chime in on this because uh, we're at additional point in just non WWE wrestling bullet club for better or worse until they figure out what they are, they're done. <laughs> and so right now, if we're going to, if we're going to give that money in the bank briefcase to anyone outside of WWE, and we want someone that's really going to hammer home that this is not a WWE guy, you give it to Tetsuya Naito. Naito is the oh. kind of guy who will dis- I like will Naito. Throw it in. Wait, he this, will that's the guy that does this, right? That money in the bank briefcase <laughs> that, at every yeah. turn. Okay. Are you telling that's me you true. don't want to see yeah, Tetsuya Naito basically urinating on the money in the bank briefcase <laughs> and true. cashing in, grabbing the universal title and just throwing it around like it around. <laughs> He, I, li- that's I the, like that's Naito. That's the anti WWE narrative I can get behind. He, he would he would give that belt to some fan to take home, and they would never see yep. it. Again. <laughs> exactly, exact. That's who you. That's who you give the money in the bank briefcase right. to. He's right, especially he's with gone. all the merchandise money Lij is making in Japan at this point. <laughs> that's true. Bobby, do you have one? Um, not one of your puppets. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, um, I would like to see Dalton Castle. With the money in the bank briefcase. There you go. That'd be fun. Side note, somebody came out to Dalton Castle's old Katy Perry Peacock music in another <laughs> promotion, and I was very offended by it this weekend. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, but no, Dalton makes sense. I, Dalton always looked like a WWE guy to me. I yeah. think that they're going to buy him soon. Oh, it's, it's They're it's going to get him. Inevitable. Right? I, give it, I give it two years. I give it two more. 
uh, within the next year or two. Could you imagine they're gonna snatch him. Dong Castle and Velveteen Dream? That would be oh. the shit. He Look will take Dawn Cat, but see, he has to bring the boys. Mm-hmm. He has to bring the boys, or bring in somebody Rose that, Bunch. yeah, that could, yeah, bring in a couple of bitch boys that could do. I don't know though, but the boys they just seem so good together. I like them. I don't want to break them up. <laughs> they look good together, man. All three of them, they look good together. Speaking of brothers, package. speaking of brothers, well, and they look good brothers, together. Right? What what happened to this is like off subject, but what happened to that other Sing brother? He's injured. Oh, he got injured. He got okay, injured. Okay, he's, he's injured. injured yeah. I don't know if he's the one that uh, uh, Randy Orton kept catapulting into things, uh, uh, but yeah, that was he, both of them. I, I, I think, think he, it was basically the one he just kept picking up and dropping on the one on the them, announce table. One of like, them was very talented in getting the extra three feet up in the air and looking mm-hmm. like he died. I, so I think the one who's injured has a foot injury or a leg injury. Yeah. I could be wrong. Is either the, is either a leg yeah, or a shoulder? Bad. But uh, no, you know it was. I think it was a leg. But yeah, it makes a lot of sense because really, like those two are like Jinder's boys, yes. right? So there's J, they're J and J security. They yeah, are exactly, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Ooh, Jinder's boys versus Dalton's boys. Yeah. That would be a good match. Now two hundred five live is looking good. Okay, <laughs> okay, Triple H, get it done. Mad Mike, uh, he says Dalton Castle teaming with Breezango. Okay, mm. but not on that. Raw, but not on Raw. Because, yeah, not on holy Raw. crap, not on Raw. Um, oh, if he goes to I Raw, I want to see him fucked. team with Charlotte. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, I want to see him yeah. team with Charlotte. The Peacock gimmick. Oh, team yes. Peacock. And he has to do the Peacock. He has to bring the robe. Mm-hmm. And oh, yeah. you got to have the yeah. boys because they are the big part of his entrance. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't want to see Don Castle go up the steps by himself. I want him to step on the boys' back. Mm-hmm. And get in the ring. I love the way he Nobody just does that. he snaps his finger and the dude just drops on all fours. I love that shit. It's awesome. You know who That's else would be I love that shit? A good money in the bank recipient. Who? Uh, Jimmy Jacobs. Who? Ooh. Really? Yeah. So, so no, I'm kidding. I know who full he is. zombie princess Jimmy Jacobs. Yes. Po- mm-hmm. Post. Does he even still wrestle? In, no, he just got yeah, fired from uh, WWE. Well, I mean, no, I know. No, I, he, I mean, I know he's with Impact, he is and he comes down with Congo yep. Kong. He is but. wrestling. Uh, he's been wrestling with our, our friends in Premier Wrestling on Cleveland, available on IndieWrestling.us. Okay. Uh, so yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, okay. Yeah, he's been doing that. Um, okay. So uh, I, I'm going to go. Uh, maybe just I'm on the high from this week and watching these guys on Impact Wrestling uh, recently, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm sorry. You're at, you're at a high from watching Impact. No, you know what? I told, I, I, it's, I it's did say like that I'm Impact doing something illicit. <laughs> Impact yes. wrestling is starting to get better, though. Guys, they are. I'm I'm sorry. I watched DJZ and uh, All right. uh, Everett against against Drago and Aerostar. I think I'm doing wow. making good right. decisions yeah, in my life. Choice. Okay. Yeah. I right. mean, and it's not like. All right. So what's your I'm prediction? I'm making good decisions. Um, I I want Pentagon. I love Give Pentagon. Give the Pentagon. I love them as a... Uh, Cero Miero. I to, like to that him. effect, Mil Mortez in his non-pajamas. <laughs> Wait. I like Mil Mortez. Mil Mortez in his non-pajamas. Man. I like That's him. the black pants. I would be worried that as... I was very surprised about how much shorter Jeff Cobb was than I thought he was. Um, He's my height. Yeah. That's, that's, that's incredible. Um, I'm worried to see Mil Mortez... I mean, I've seen him in person in the ring, but like I think he would be winded him. running to the ring I'm to always, cash in the, right. the briefcase. Like, I'm, I'm always worried. It's like those guys going to WWE and realizing they're not as big as you think they are. Right. Because because if it's going to be noticed, it's there. Because AAA and um, Lucha work with Impact, I would love to see some of those guys come into Impact and. Mm-hmm. You know, get their face out there more. I love Mil Mortez. Mm-hmm. I like Matanza. And bring some of the other guys, like the Mac. I like the Mac. Oh, the Mac is so great. Oh, my he God. More. He was in NXT. Oh, no, oh, no. Like Bruce or Missy, what's up over was there? Was he? That is right. She's yeah, saying yeah. you can't really have a much of a comparison of how intense uh, Cobb can be because he literally wrestled in his underwear because uh, his his gear was what, is, uh, what lost, his drawers look like was lost on uh, uh, the airline. Mm-hmm. Was he wearing tighty uh, whities? He went in. He, no, it was just like the black spandexy kind of shorts thing. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, he he comes in, apologizes for his wardrobe mal- malfunction, and then like f- kicks off his flip flops. He like exploded into flip flops. <laughs> he did. He <laughs> 
<laughs> it was amazing. amazing. And then he loves turtles. So, well, guys, let us know who you think. Uh, who would you give a money in a bank contract to? What's that? Oh, I see him. I see him. Okay. Uh, Pete Dunn. Yes. Ooh. Nick, Nick Gage. That, uh, oh, that, which, that would be fun. You okay, are, wait a minute. Which one is Nick Gage? What he's, is he? Isn't he the one that like serves he's, time? The yeah, he's the one. Cage. He's done hard time. He was. He's gang affiliated. Yeah, all that. Like stuff. legit. Nicholas Cage. Like legit. No, not Nick Nicholas Cage. Cage. <laughs> <laughs> not Nicholas Cage. Yeah. Can you imagine no, that he, money in the bank. Mickey, cash Mickey it. Rourke. <laughs> Mickey Rourke. While we're at it, um, but. <laughs> Uh, no, yeah, we, I saw him once at AIW, and it was one of the scariest experiences I've ever seen as a fan. He's, he's I gotta look terrifying. him up. Now. Yeah. He's terrifying. He's, man. If you're just like, oh, that guy could kill me, and it might kill me. Uh, that's he's died in the ring. He died at like a CZW event or something for like seven minutes. He always talks about it. He's like, I die. I'm always gonna do this. <laughs> um, wow. Jimmy Havoc or even Kimberly says Tina. Uh, where's the rest of them? Where's the rest of them? Zack Ryder and Chelsea <laughs> Green. Oh my God, this is Nick Ms. Gage. Mr. I'm, I'm, look, I'm looking at this well, guy. So Will Osprey, Omega, uh, Marty Skrull, Penta uh, from Tina. Everybody, Mike, they're throwing much. <laughs> Johnny Mundo, Velveteen Dream, Pentagon Dark. There's two men. Mike, Mike, in Mike said, here. "Screw it." Mundo, Mike, no, okay. Mundo what, should say? win a world Mike, championship. Mike said, "Screw it." We're Give up, it to Taya. I, Give it to Taya the Valkyrie. Yeah. I think we're we're forgetting the number one superstar outside of WWE right now, L.A. Park. <laughs> <laughs> oh, L.A. Dance. I uh, am LA so. Park dancing I you hate feel better. that they call him L.A. Park. <laughs> yeah, I hate yeah, that. Yeah. I wish the man he could is just, working. I wish he could just buy the rights to the La yeah. Parka name. That's just. Oh god. He's working LA AAA Park. and CMLL at the same time. He can call himself whatever he wants at That's that true. point. That's true. <laughs> I mean, as long as he still looks the same, he still does the dance with the chair. Does he still dance on the yeah. chair? Do oh, it, yeah. did that yeah. weird strut yeah. and then That's knock the knees popular. and stuff. Yep. L.A. Yep. Park okay. is still L.A. Park. <laughs> He'll always, okay. always be the Skeletor guy to me. <laughs> <laughs> he was probably yeah. my favorite wrestler in the LWO. <laughs> <laughs> he probably was. Yeah. Yeah. LWO. Um, <laughs> I heard a rumor that um, if, if Mysterio comes back, that he wants to form the LWO. Yeah, I I read that somewhere. Really? Yeah, I saw that too. And I'm like, hmm. You can have a lot Sid of fun Cara with that. And, um, El yeah. Right. Bring, yeah, because he ain't doing jack right well, now. He's, 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 he's unfriending Sin Cara. They, they, so. they got him beating up jobbers and stuff because they don't have none for him yet. That's right. I guess he's fighting Sin Cara. You got to introduce it to and, the audience. No, you know, not everybody watches NXT, or at least they don't think they do. Uh, I do. So yeah, Bobby does. You know, for the longest time, I was saying his that name wrong. I kept saying Igalo because I thought that's what he was saying, but it's Idolo. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know that. You know, I, like when his I didn't either. Yeah, El Idolo, which oh, means you... the idol. So oh. yeah, at, I did. I did not know that. I, I was saying Igolo for a year. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> I looked it up. I was like, uh, "What does that mean?" And it was like, "Did you mean El Idolo?" We need a segment that that we need Garza to get back on here to teach us some some Spanish yeah. terms. Yeah. And yeah, have a say him appropriately because he left him. He's out there. What? No, uh, no. Our, our friend Antonio Garza from the, that's been on the show. Oh, I thought you were he, talking about Garza he, Junior. He is. He did, <laughs> no, no. He's he lives down in El Paso, and he corrected us a lot when we were learning yeah. names in Lucha Underground when it first started. So okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So it, that would, that would be appreciated. Or you know, I messed up El Framundo. <laughs> exactly. Right, you know. Like, I mean, I'm the one that messed up Finn ba Baylor for the Finn for the Baylor. longest time. I almost yeah. did it again. I like that one dude that was with. Oh no, wait, no, that wasn't. That wasn't um, Lucha Underground. That was that. What was that terrible wrestling show that was on MTV for like? Oh, WSX wrestling Society X. Yeah, Seth Rollins yes. was on that, and Jimmy mm -hmm. Jacobs, and but uh, El Mil Martos was uh, the guy that Vampiro took on. Right. <laughs> Yeah, mirror, mirror, mirror. I just remember they had that one wrestler, the, the the skinny white boy with the mask, and they called him El Blanco, um, El Hombre Blanco and yeah. Mascarado, yeah, yeah, which means white guy in a mask. And I always thought that that was very funny. Oh, thank you for being right on point, WWE guys. Thank you so much. Also on point, our good friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling at occupyprowrestling.com, uh, supporting the show, and they they just not only they're supporting the show. Uh, by being an advertiser, they also uh, toss on um, all of our shows on here too, helping get the word out, including our interviews with uh, London Ali last week and, and our episodes. Uh, they also do a lot of podcasts, uh, also uh, involved in the Jakar and 15 podcast, has some great 
great back catalog as well and some great merchandise from our friend Alex Cars over on whatamaneuver.net if you look under the Occupy Pro Wrestling store there. Thank you to our friends, OccupyProWrestling.com, Power Number 2, The Smarks on the Twitter for supporting Wrestling Mayhem Show. All right, real quick, like, because it's a shorter, it's not going to be four hours. Like, at least NXT is very good about um, kind of boiling it down oh, for us. And I'm, waving you down. I'm almost caught up with Boiling it. Boiling bag. But, <laughs> yes? You just read the ad. I read the, I did the. No, you did not read the ad. I, I ad-libbed the ad. Is that okay? Damn it, Sorg. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Sorry, that- TakeOver <laughs> is this weekend, this Saturday as well. It's usually those damn indie shows getting in the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll watch it afterwards, you know, like like New Japan. Uh, but anyways. Whoa, 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 what? What? New Japan is not an indie show. Sir. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, Raw I'm is an indie show. I'm going to an indie show. Oh, Our okay. friends at Rise Wrestling, Rise with a Y. Uh, which is a very fantastic show, uh, but uh, we'll be uh, checking that on a time delay and avoiding social media as much as possible. But uh, NXT TakeOver Chicago, I guess this is what we're doing every year, Chicago. right? Uh, is it Chicago too? Did they number this one? No, I think this is just NXT TakeOver Chicago. I don't okay. think they've done one in Chicago. Uh, you, you think they did? They one did one before Backlash last year. Uh, yeah. Oh, Really? Yeah, it was that was why backlash last year with Jinder Mahal and everything was so weird. Is because like the night before you, had, uh, it was a barn burn. I can't even remember the the card, but yeah, NXT Chicago. It was when Tommaso Ciampa turned on Johnny Gargano. Actually, oh, was yeah. the t- last takeover oh. Chicago. And now look at that; they're back on the card. Yeah. There you See go. how that mm. came full circle. That bug is still not leaving them alone. <laughs> NXT bug at the bottom of the corner. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, takeover. Of course, you got a, a street fight between Tommaso Ciampa and and uh, Gargano. That match is going to steal the show. And it's a street fight. Wasn't the last one like unsanctioned? Which is yeah, basically yep. the same damn thing. Yeah. I don't get it, but whatever, man. Sure, I okay. would love to see these two fights. No, no. Unsanctioned down, didn't I'm down happen. With it. This one did happen. Oh, because like uns- unsanctioned is like this is WWE is making you sign to hold harmless and all that stuff. Whereas this is like a Chicago street fight, so they'll probably end okay. up. I don't know. So that first match was like the best match that we didn't really see somebody's gonna yeah get rid of it's, it's like it's like every wcw uncensored pay-per-view where technically it, none of the matches happened because they were all say, cause they're making, i must they're have dreamt a hell of a match too because i was not like, on the books somebody's gonna get ran over WCW's by a whiteboard later bronco years. <laughs> <laughs> uh but anyways but we do yeah, we do have for... that it's gonna steal the show I, it's yeah, it don't, it don't even matter who again. wins i don't no, even care like no, that's no. that's gonna be a good match uh, but we also have Velveteen Dream and Ricochet. That's going to steal the show. Holy crap. Another Just match, another match where I don't care who wins because that match is going to be awesome, too. <laughs> mm-hmm. When he jumped over the out that of the ring insane. and landed on the floor, that blew my mind. Like, I did. I mean, I knew he was uh, capable of doing that. That was, that was some super but stuff. Yeah. When, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anything that you can do, the Dream can do better. And then he did that shit. And I was just like, yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> it, 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 it's uh you know seeing uh, <laughs> this guy that looked kind of like Ricochet at Lucha Underground in person, um like it's it's another world to watch that. Yeah. It, it just looks impossible when you see those guys do that, and and, and to see the uh, Ricochet and Dream go at it is just going to be incredible. That's that's a match where they're both where they're both winners regardless of the victor. I mean, they're both going to mm-hmm. get a standing ovation when the match is over. It don't matter. They're both going to get over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that match, the Gargano and Champa match, those are going to be the two biggest matches of the night, and I don't even know what the other matches are. Well, one is Aleister Black and Lars Sullivan Ooh. for the I'm NXT Championship. For that That's oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> Lars I forgot about the championship. Lars is, Lars is great. I want to yeah. see him win the title at like a house show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, give him, no, give him the Samoa Joe. Like you don't expect it to happen. Now all yeah, yeah. he's ruined like a marquee title reign. You know, like he can be that WWE made spoiler because he's he's great. I don't want him to win it on a big show. I want him to surprise people and make them you know have to go to NXT house shows. You and, want it to happen to, on Download Fest? No, not even down. I'm talking like on the the like that weird NXT Johnstown. You know, Johnstown, yeah, you know yeah. those like that Tampa circuit they do. Yeah, where it's like yeah. all of the Florida. I want it on one of those shows. I've been, I've just been, like, yeah. Uh, the the Dade the Dade City Armory show that I got to go to a couple months ago. You know, where it's like three rows of fans on each side, and that's it. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's just an indie show with better like banners, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, and, La- more, and more expensive merchandise. Yeah, La- La- <laughs> Lars. I love Lars. I like his. I like his look. He reminds me of a young, um, modern, uglier. If we, if I can even say that, uglier version of what Gorilla Monsoon used to look like in his prime. He's what. Yes. He's what Snitsky should have been. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yep. Yes to I, both. Yes. Yep. My favorite thing. My favorite thing about Lars is his entrance. His because entrance they is just awesome. Shoot it so much like a golden era comic book monster villain. And the, he's and, a kaiju. You know I mean? And they're silhouetting the him the off of his right sweat, right awesome. which is awesome. I like. Did you say he's? A, did you say he's a kaiju? Yeah, he's the kaiju of NXT right now. He's their Godzilla. He's their <laughs> kaiju. You know, I love it. Exactly. I love it. I <laughs> like him, but you know what? But he's not ready. He's not ready for the championship. No, yet. no, no, no. But it is no, a, not yet. No, no. But, but it's still going to be a good match, be. though. It's still, <laughs> it's still going to be a good match. Tuesday though. on the house circuit, he'll be the, he'll be there. Uh, <laughs> we also have Shaney Baszler and uh, Nikki Cross. That and could still do that. Yeah. Uh, Cross is the perfect foil for Baszler. Oh yeah. I can see that being a feud that will stretch out for months. Um, I want to see. I don't want Shayna to lose it yet because I feel mm-hmm. like she just won it. I want to see Dakota so, Kai come full circle and beat Shayna for the title. Yeah, mm-hmm. stop this scary, this this, this, right this, this scared chick mode crap. I'm mm-hmm. tired of that. Like her all cowering in fear. I'm like, what the fuck? What is this? Like, no. well, you wait, you wait for up. badass, crazy Dakota Kai when uh, when Nikki Cross turns her over and says, "Hey, you need to." <laughs> You know, you gotta you gotta stand up for yourself and yeah. like and then Dakota Kai like comes out like dressed like Ruby Riot. Yeah, well, cause seriously, because um, besides Nikki Cross, what other badass chick is on the NXT yeah. roster? Yeah, I'm really uh, trying to. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to think. Hard. Who? Um, Candice LeRae. Who? Candice LeRae. Candice LeRae. Mrs. Gargano. Oh yeah. Yeah. She's definitely uh, a badass chick. Yeah. Uh there's the Marine I can see that. uh Lacey Evans. Mm. She's she's on the come she's up. But you know what? Really she, she's on the come up. I love that woman's right that she does. I love yeah. that Bianca. Move. Bianca, Bianca is who I'm really on board with. Uh-huh. I'm on she's board like with Bianca. Favorite. I saw her live and I loved mm-hmm. her. Yeah. And I finally understand what the EST mean. She it took me, me the longest time to figure that out because because she, she keeps calling herself the EST of yeah, NXT. Yeah, I never got it. Okay, the best EST meaning um, the greatest, the best. Anything that ends with EST yeah. is okay. what she is. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Greatest, smartest, strongest, smartest. Gotcha. Yeah. So, I will love Bianca forever love because she got me on WWE.com. <laughs> <laughs> she is sexy. She, True well, story. Well, yeah, she got your tweet on there, right? Yeah, my, my tweet was on WWE.com. I was the one that started the feud between her and Mandy Rose because Mandy Rose whipped her with the hair. Remember that? <laughs> yep. yep. Wh- whip, whipped uh, somebody with her hair. And she just, uh, my tweet just, like, took off. Uh, and then, of course, we do have an Undisputed Era, uh, Roderick and O'Reilly against Oni Lorcan and Danny Burch. I'm ready for That's all the know what? I'm ready for all the punches. You know what's crazy? <laughs> I thought that they fired Danny Burch, and then all of a sudden, you know, they they build him up on TV because I thought I read yeah. somewhere like Danny Burch well, was released. He wasn't and I was like, signed. Like he was on the UK tournament last year. He yeah. still wasn't signed until. Months ago, I think. What well, happened? that explains why he kept losing all the time. What because ha- Danny Burch is so good. Mm-hmm. What's what that? happened with Roderick Strong and Pete Dunn? Did they actually have a so feud? So that is going to come through at... I think that's going to come through with that, that, that six-man match at the UK tournament. Okay. Yeah. All right. I so, didn't know if they did anything with that after that. Uh, it, it was still kind of going. <coughs> yeah, they, they were doing it on TV. There was a lot of back and forth on television okay. with it. Uh, uh, but but I, I, you know what? I am on board. I when when they fought each other, um, I'm talking about Oni and Danny. I said to myself, "You need to make these guys a tag team," and they did mm. make them a tag team. They just need to give them a, ni- a nice name, and I have a name for them: the Brit Boston Connection, or the or the Brit Boston Bru- Bruisers, something like that. Because these guys, when they hit, it, it's like some straight up shoot fighting. Like mm-hmm. you can actually hear it. The, the European uppercuts, the chops, the elbows, everything. It's just mm-hmm. like, damn, these guys, uh, for someone so small, because Oni is like. Every time Oni's in there, I, I see Oni coming out, even though I know he's kind of like the set jobber of the match. Right. It's still but gonna, he still it's still gonna a great look, match. It's still going to look like a fight. He was on 205 right. a little bit, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah, he was. I, he would be perfect for 205 Live. Yeah. I, I guarantee it. He would 
Well, because he has a fan base. Everybody's throwing the, the place, ones so. up. My, my friend Justin, when we went to NXT Johnstown, he he doesn't watch NXT because he doesn't have like the internet. Um, but he he looks at Loni Orkin or Oni Lorkin looks at me and goes, "Who's this guy?" And I'm like, "Wait." <laughs> <laughs> And he was very, he, he was like, holy crap, that guy's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's the greatest thing, seeing those guys, and they're, they're, they're just as, as heavy at house if, shows. If they win the tag team championships, I'm, I'm, I'm for that. I feel I like, really I feel like Undisputed is going to have it for a while. I do, but, too. Uh, I do, too. But, 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 but these guys. They could win while, it and then, and then lose it back to, on, on a this, future NXT show I, or something, you know. I got to believe that this to give is them some more cred. fuel to the Birch Lorcan feud. Like, I can't see them being a long term tag team. Mm-hmm. I see, like, I don't know. I feel like take over Brooklyn, you're going to have another Birch versus Lorcan match. It's going to be out of this up. world. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's not going to be as big After as Gargano and Ciampa, but. Yeah. yeah. One of them will turn on the other one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, at that, on that note, what did you learn from wrestling this week, guys? Um, what did I learn from wrestling this week? I mean, the week just started. Are we are we counting last week too? Because it's Tuesday. So <laughs> you're not on every week, Tuesday. so it's whatever relatively. Okay. Yes. All right. So what have I learned? I've learned that um, WWE should have like a snooze button to wake me up during you know commercials and in between matches and stuff because i swear i'm asleep by nine o'clock I was wondering and i that. and i yeah. wake up at 11 when the the final match is starting to wrap up and i'm yeah. like oh i'm glad i i at, slept at, at one point like, i would i would set like <laughs> two and three minute alarms timers on my phone when i'm like i'm gonna catch a nap so i can try to stay up through this rock <laughs> yes like <laughs> you know like i've done Trish. that before for a show as loud as Monday Night Raw, it should be keeping people awake. Yet somehow we still end up falling asleep hey. to Michael Cole shouting it. I I watched a child fall asleep at Super Indie up in the rafters this weekend. So okay, man, I, and that was a fucking that was like an insanely loud show with like you know yeah. over three hundred people just goes balls to the wall the entire night. I will say this because a lot of people, I mean. A lot of a, a lot of you guys will agree with me that the commentating actually does help the matches go. Yeah, um, I liked it better when Booker T and Corey yes. Graves was going at it. Yep. I'm not feeling the coach coming back. No, because I'm going to defend the coach. I mean, I love the, the coach. Don't the get hour. me wrong, but but yeah. to see Booker and Corey got heat. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And they, and they display it on Raw, and I was what I was listening to it. I was loving it because Corey would. Like try to push Booker's buttons, and you hear Booker say, "All right, now, you know, because <laughs> you know, because yeah, that's you when you know shit's real, right? That shit is real. Like he'd been like, don't make me take off these headphones and whoop your ass.' Because look, he beat Batista's ass, so yeah. you know that he can whoop Corey. Yeah. Come on now. I mean, fucking uh, Book is Book is legit from the streets, so right. I wouldn't. Why anybody would think they could fuck with him, right? You know, he's from Houston, but he fights like he's from Harlem. <laughs> get pretty rough <laughs> yeah I know. definitely get pretty rough <laughs> um i've had in my head watching new japan um it was a super indie of course was here we, we filmed for indie wrestling.us and for the third year row jonathan gresham if you guys you know you know him from ring of honor of mm-hmm. course and i i you know he, he has he's having great stuff on there but man he's been showcased the last three years he's made it to the finals third year in a row winning it spoiler uh, against David Starr, who we've had on the Indie Mayhem show. Amazing. Those guys had about like an over, was it over 30 minutes? Um, just absolute classic. Um, I've never been so excited for like 30 minutes of grappling. Okay. Right? This is the third match of the night. Both guys both guys are really worn down. Um, uh, Gresham started with a just a feud ender with Jackson Argos at the beginning of the night. Um, and just the story uh, on top of commentary from Joe Nebrowski that a lot of you guys also know from Future of Honor uh, videos on YouTube. Um, and I kept comparing everything on Dominion to that match on Sunday night. Uh, it was it was a kind of a weird, surreal experience, you know, to, to kind of do that uh, and, and see something like that. Um, you know, and two guys, you know, David Sarr, that audience, you know, maybe some of them are, are you know, they come to something like an IWC Super Indie. They're 
it'll be more in tune with indie wrestling and everything. And I, and I, I don't, but I don't him. know how many people knew who David Starr was, had seen I any did. of I him. I have seen two of his appearances <laughs> on Ring of Honor, and I saw the place just erupted Star? when he I came. Think. Yeah, he okay. made he made one or two appearances. I didn't know who he was, mm-hmm. but the place erupted when he came out. He's so I'm done like, a lot. When we were talking with him last year, like he was doing uh, W, he was WXW champion from Germany. Okay, so like he's like a well, and he played that up, you know, a uh, pretty good heel wise. You know, your favorite saying, wrestler's favorite wrestler. Your favorite wrestler's favorite wrestler. Yes, yeah. uh, which was great. And just um, if you don't wanted to watch a match that was doing so much with so little and the expressions and the reactions and the one-upmanship like uh it, it's it's the it gets you excited about chain wrestling if you don't give a shit about chain wrestling match i love chain if wrestling. you if you're just opening it. the pandora's box of david star stuff i gotta recommend his match with quackenbush at spring break oh. uh, mike quackenbush yeah yeah star Man. versus quackenbush it's magnificent That's it's not it's it's probably like 15 to 20 minutes, too. It's real easy to digest, and it's just, it's like, if you like chain wrestling or you're just getting into chain wrestling, it is like pure heroin. Going it's on YouTube a- right now. <laughs> yep, yep, searching it. Um, if you guys want to see yeah. what I'm talking about, the, we, we, we're, we've we been trying to put like a, a two-minute uh, clips of uh, some of the best matches of the night from the guys that we're working with. And there was a two minutes. Um, I don't even know if it's, a, I don't even think it's the first two minutes. I, I, I just picked somewhere in the first two Two, 10 minutes of it uh and just just check that out for a little sampling over the indie wrestling um facebook and uh, uh youtube page but i just i just can't get over that match um <laughs> so it, it, it's 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 awesome uh what, what else did you guys learn uh larry i learned that chris jericho is a goddamn chameleon <laughs> <laughs> nice. yes he is he, absolutely he, he can he can go from being the comic in wwe at it uh the greatest royal rumble to ripping naito's face off mm-hmm. three months later pretty legitimately too yeah he was bleeding from his eye and his ears i gotta see that match it, it was mm-hmm. insane mm-hmm. that was a mean streak i've never seen in chris it jericho was, and i think like the um the i think it was like secure genesis or something i was watching uh from access this week um, Cody Rhodes also got hurt. Like, what is with eye bleeding injuries in New know. Japan yeah. that looks so vicious? Their punches are real. They go, <laughs> yeah. yeah they, they go it's balls real ball. elbow yeah. punches that like, go straight to the dome. It's and crazy. They got to work on that, it's, man. But an hour of New Japan on Access listening with Jim Ross is worth three hours of Raw <laughs> listening to Michael Cole. Absolutely. Oh God! If they bring Jim Ross back, man. Well, he, no, he, Jim he, Ross no, does he, the access. He does. He does the taping. No, no, no. Access. I mean, if he came back to Raw. Oh well, no, that's I don't no, know. I don't think no. it would that, still, would. that still wouldn't save it. I I think the problem is he can't get. Well, no, Jim Ross did Wrestle Kingdom, but you can't. But I don't think Jim Ross can. I like Don Callis and Kevin Kelly better mm-hmm. than Jim Ross and. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, it, it, I like Josh Burnett. Uh, uh, the, Josh Burnett is not bad. But he's next to a damn legend. It's it's a good and studio show. I do like is. Kevin Kelly because I, I I I missed him when he left Ring of Honor. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, since going to Japan, really, I, I really always, brings that up. And, I always Don, liked him. I always liked Don him. Callis is amazing too. Like we can't undersell just how oh, good he yeah. is. At, he is especially brilliant. At Dominion when when Okada hits Omega with that drop kick and he just yells, "God damn it!" Like it really <laughs> he. He I, sells the anger in a way that, like, only the Venturas and the Heenans yeah. really used to. Like, yeah. he just gets so into it while still maintaining the kind of smarmy heel thing he does. It's it's a master class. It's beautiful. I, I he, like, he brings up Impact Wrestling. If you're, like, really, like, ugh, I can't take a Josh Matthews, like, him being paired with a, a you know, him versus when he was paired up with the Pope, like, it really mm-hmm. brings up that game. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, well, you know, I like Pope. When he was announced, but then when they had him and Jeremy Borash with it, who's now with WWE, mm-hmm. I don't know what the hell he's doing with the company. They're doing heel Matthews and everything, and it got weird. So. Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah, they were battling back and forth, and, and Pope was ended up playing the damn mediator. And I'm yeah, like, what yeah. the hell? It's weird. It's yeah, weird. I did not. I was not. It's feeling, like a it's like a reverse Booker T. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't feeling that. Um, Bobby, what'd you learn? Um, I learned that wrestling is awesome, and. There's so many things happening at, at Super Indie this weekend. Like going back to David Starr, I, I I thanked him personally for attacking Josh the Good Woods or the Goods Woods 
after the uh, top prospect tournament. Hashtag not my top prospect. Um, <laughs> That's right, he did. got win. revenge for Crystal Russo. Yes. And I said, I said, thank you for attacking Josh Woods after that tournament. He's like, my pleasure, anytime. I would gladly do it again. <laughs> um, nice. I, I, I uh, talked to Ethan Page about going toy hunting and, and – Telling him like the best places to go in Pittsburgh, and he's like, "Oh, when I come back, I'll have to go go somewhere again." You know, all these places. Talk to him about my pop collection. Um, p- bonding with uh, Jeff Cobb over a puppet. It's like so many awesome things, like just awesome matches at Super Indy. It was amazing. Yeah, just Bobby, an awesome weekend. We, we we stationed Bobby over at the DVD table, and you just get to hang out with all the wrestlers and and puppets, and it's, it's, it's pretty it's fun. It's pretty freaking fantastic. out having to tour with the puppet. Yeah, yeah, no, multiple times. <laughs> Uh, Ross, what'd you learn from wrestling this week, or uh, oh. from court cases, I guess? <laughs> what I learned from wrestling this week is that Harold May is going to take New Japan into the next level. Did he mention that it's going to go to the next level? Uh, rewatch. <laughs> if you get the chance, go to New Japan. Watch Harold May's speech about uh, New Japan going into the next uh, era. It sounds exactly like the Kang and Kodo speech about twirling, <laughs> twirling towards <Good> freedom. <laughs> Not upwards, but downwards. Not backwards, but forwards. And twirling, twirling into the future. Uh, is it was, a Wonka Vader? Is it, like the, is, is it like the promo about your spot in the Four Horsemen? Yeah, exactly. It's just a, it's a, it's a bizarre time, and it made me... It was, I don't know how to put it. It just taught me that wrestling, even on the best nights like Dominion was, can be just utterly ridiculous in the best ways. <laughs> I mean, it just, it, I don't know why they had him introduce the show. I'm glad they did. <laughs> I Harold me check that out. Yeah. <laughs> and Wheels, Wheels, I know I was secretly cursing your name when I heard the Peacock song uh, over there in RWA. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, let's see. From the chat room, Alex Miller learned that if you watch two guys go through a barbed wire uh, trampoline, you just cheer. What the fuck? Cool. <laughs> hey, did Tournament of Death just happen? Because I've been seeing G Raver's gifts, and I've been yes. really fearing for his life. Um, is that, is that uh, the one where he got like slammed on a table saw? Oh my god! Yes. Wow. Right? I think that did happen. Um, yeah. yeah. And you know what? I, I just want to give a shout out because I, I just followed her on um, Instagram like a month ago. Um, I am a fan of this Maria Manic. Oh, Marie Manic. have you seen her in person yet? Yes, I have. I saw her. They did a, they did a little, uh, it was a women's show mm-hmm. out at, I can't remember where the place was, McKeesport. but it was out in McKeesport. Yeah. 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 And um, apparently she fought, because I didn't know anybody there. Yeah. Like I didn't know who Maria Manic was back then. The only ones I remembered there was Casey Spinelli and Mickey Knuckles. Those are the only two that I remembered. And she took on, Mickey Knuckles and they beat the mm-hmm. shit out of each other. And apparently yep. that's a thing that they do because I was yep. watching old videos and I'm like, that's what they do. Like, and and I like how they fight in the crowd. Like we're sitting on the bleachers, right? They get out the ring, they walk over to the bleachers. Everybody got the hell out the way. So I got up and moved, and they're sitting on the bleacher facing each other, slapping the shit out of each other. And then she choke slammed her through a t- through a chair, a steel chair. And then she. Walked away. She walked right past me too. I just, I just stayed out the way. Came back with a bottle and broke it upside her head. Just broken glass everywhere, <laughs> blood and shit. I'm just like, what the hell am I watching here, man? I this thought I was nice. going to a women's show. I thought I was going to see some nice lady wrestling. Right, because when you see Marie Manic, Maria Manic, I mean, no, you see this yeah. sexy buff chick and wearing then, like pink and, and, and pigtails. Usually, I think. Right. Yeah, she had her. Yeah, yeah she had, she dyed her because I looked at pictures of her. She was a blonde She's at like the time, super, but now she got the dark hair yeah. and. And she and put her really hair in like, pigtails. And she's really built, too. Yeah, she is. Especially her legs. Mm-hmm. Like, her legs have gotten much bigger. because I, I, Of course, because I follow her on Instagram now. And um, You get all those workout videos. Yeah. And she, she's awesome. So, shout out to her. And it, going there made me open my eyes to the um, independent women that's out there. And I think a lot of them um, got potential down there the road. Go. You know, um, shout out because I've been hearing a lot from Rob uh, Rise Wrestling Rise Ascent that was filmed here in Pittsburgh. Um, there's some friends of the show like Honey mm-hmm. Badger, um, um, Delilah Doom was part of it, uh, Kikio. Um, uh, uh, that's been going up on Rise. I think it's RiseAscent.com. Okay. Uh, I know Rob's been checking that out. You can get the trial or, or pay for the month and, and check out a few episodes. I think they did six episodes here. And of course, they're going to be filming more, and I hear it's really uh, some really good quality women's wrestling. Uh, so go check that out. 
uh, as well. I think I got everybody. I don't see anything else in the chat room. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Ross, for joining us here and hey, hanging thank out. Thank you for us. having me. Yes, it was a blast talking with y'all. Thank you so. I much. I wish we got more puppets. I will admit, we didn't. Mm -hmm. I, I could have. Well, here we go. You know those oh, damn puppets. It's not too late. <laughs> um, hold on a minute. Oh. Here, take your time. Who's <laughs> I gotta read. Speaking of that, who's, who's, who's gonna see that puppet movie that's coming out soon? The puppet movie? Sure. Um, what is <laughs> it? The, the Happy Time Murders? Yes, yes. I can't wait to see that. I got the pup, the turtle. Oh, God, I love uh, puppets. Of course, Carlos, the dragon. How do you feel about the wrestler? <laughs> Hi, Carlos. Hi. And then, and then T Rex, who was neglected this week. No, I'm sorry, T Rex. Very better. <laughs> Understandably so. Understandably I'm so. I'm in Jurassic Park, damn it. He's a movie. Yeah, star. he's got a lot. He's got. He, he brought a clip and everything from Jurassic yeah. World. And you didn't even let him play it. My God. The clip. There's like a toy chest right behind him or something. Like where? No, are you that's all his all pops. That that's all his pops. That's all yeah, of it. Those yeah. are all my pops. Yeah. Yeah. But well, not all of them. So not all. No, the no, the rest no, are on there's... the other. The rest are on the other two walls. You don't see. My uh, room okay. is built from pops. Yeah. Yeah. He's gonna he's gonna be able to build. No, he's got. We'll show you Bobby's Instagram after the show, Jay. Uh, <laughs> five hundred eighty-four pops. Five hundred and eighty-four pops. Bobby no, FJ Town on the, on the Instagram. Four hundred eighty-four. Four hundred eighty-four. Either way, too many yeah, and a very expensive many. Chris Hardwick. <laughs> Jesus. That's why one day we're gonna get uh, Bobby and Ethan Page at uh, Funko headquarters as we go out and visit Tina out there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you a lot. Thank you a lot, everybody. Uh, Ross, where can people find what you do on the interwebs? Uh, at Ross W. Berman IV on Twitter every Wednesday. I update WrestleZone with uh, New Japan Pro Wednesday, where we kind of collect all the week stories and give them to you. I do all of the uh, New Japan results for WrestleZone. Uh, my music's at rossberman.bandcamp.com, and I yeah, that's it. That's cool. about it. That's awesome. Bobby FJ Town on the Twitter and the Instagram, so you I can see all this box week. and what. I have a plug this week. What are you plugging? I am plugging Magnum CK's new shirt, which oh. I designed. Available. Just ask him on Twitter and all the all the shows. It's a Hamilton reference. Yeah, so it's, See, it's pretty cool. Magnum CK awesome. doing so many great things. I I, I saw I saw a, a, a image for Magnum CK against RJ City. Holy shit! I really want Reason to. Reason I have match. a bet going. Not about who wins, but oh. about like, what's going to happen in the match. Um, of course, Jay Cooper, where can people find you? Um, you can find me on Facebook. I could always use more friends. Um, J A Y E C W O P E R. Um, and you know what? I ain't really, I don't, I don't be on Twitter that much, but you can it, Twitter and Instagram. I'm on Instagram a lot. So follow me on Instagram. They both have the same tag name. Um, Coop Troop Comedy. All one word. C O O P T R O O P Comedy. Also, oh, if I can plug, um, places just in case. Because I got a busy week. Anybody want to come see me this Saturday? I got a show. Actually, I got a couple shows. I got a show Friday at um at the Pleasure Bar in Lawrenceville. It's a free Ooh, show. That sounds yeah. Friday at eight o'clock. I'll I'll be on that one. Um, this Saturday I have a show in um, Club Cafe, ten p.m. It's the Deadbeat Daddies versus Baby Mamas pre Father's Day comedy show. <laughs> so that is I had to put that out there, man, because we, we always come up with some crazy ass names. Um, and then, and then, and then next week we got the laughs at the landing over at over at Rock's Landing in um, in um, McKee's Rocks, and then the Pittsburgh Improv on the twenty eighth. You know, so eight p.m. So come there. You go. And also. of course, you show a whole bunch of stuff over on RiversEdgePGH.com. And I'm on RiversEdgePGH.com. You can see me every Friday with Brian Crawford and Howie D. Mack every Friday mm -hmm. six p.m. It's a lot of fun. A lot of fun to have uh, yes. being on the show with you guys over there on the River Talk that one time. Yes. So, oh, that was awesome, man. Um, Larry is darkforgestudios.co. Yep. That's what he does um, in the basement. He carried a giant axe. Can I talk about that? <laughs> I, I, uh, we're, uh, I'm working on a, a little project for uh, Lumberjacks over in Millvale, axe throwing. Uh, and then also I'm working on some projects over at 100 Acres Manor on there an attraction. Go. There you go. Uh, those will be on Instagram soon. The axe throwing project will be up probably next week. Okay. Uh, you'll have to wait I'm a few presuming anything I see walk through my front door is an NDA. So, yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm just like, oh, wait, can I talk about the giant axe you just walked in here with? Yeah, yeah. No, Even so the earthquake we'll stuff. We'll be, we'll be posting yeah. that, posting that uh, sometime next week. 
There you go. Darkforgestudios.co. Get the social media links over there. And also, uh, shout out, please check out IndieWrestling.us. We got a special uh, code this month. Uh, check out. Uh, it's It may be hot outside, but the action's even hotter in the rent, especially hot in the West Newton Gymnasium because they have no air conditioning, and it, and it's really freaking hot, you guys. Uh, but anyways, our friends at RWA, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, check them out uh, at uh, IndieWrestling.us, and you can pick up titles for digital download with 25% off with the promo code HOT, H-O-T, 2018. Uh, on checkout for digital downloads this week if you are in the area or if you just want to watch out for the twitters because we'll be commenting on them uh we are going to have a watch party for the lucha underground season four premiere and i don't know i we should be having krista joseph on the show if he can get out of his big brother shoot for the day um afterwards we're going to do uh record the uh, lucha underground new podcast after the Lucha Underground premiere. So people want to stick around in the studio for that. I know yeah, we're going to have a few of, friends. Speaking of Big Brother, um, oh, God, what was his name? Mr. Pectacular. Mr. Pectacular is going to be a part of it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that I image. I just heard that he's on Lucha Underground. So I I'm saw that like, image, and I'm like, oh, of course he is. Because yeah. everybody involved with Lucha <laughs> Underground is in, in, involved with uh, Big Brother. So, Man, uh, <laughs> is head of household. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, no, he's the dri- I, I think Matanz is the director of fun. Isn't Matanz the little he's brother? No more Tez using the power of veto. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Money in the Bank will be here 7 p.m. or earlier, apparently. Um, look wah, up, look for wah. the Facebook event. If you guys are local, want to be a part of that, we might, uh, if things work out, we might watch uh, NXT TakeOver. Uh, however long it takes, we'll, we'll time it out before the money in the bank start. Uh, so, so you can watch it with us or rewatch it with us uh, as well. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you to the awesome chat room, everybody all across the country, uh, our friends from the West Coast, our friends from Kansas City, uh, hanging out with us tonight. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.